First on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Any additions or comments to the agenda tonight? Not from my end. I move we accept the agenda as written. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Great, move ahead. Public comment inquiry, anybody here uh, have anything other than what's on the schedule tonight? I, I was hoping to give an update on the rollout project that's happening. I don't know if now's a good time. No, sure. Okay. Um, so on May 15th, they will be installed and we'll have two people from Team Better Block. We'll have a couple of people from the Trans and hopefully a couple of people from the town crew. Half of them will get installed in the morning. We're going to have a um, meeting, a lunch meeting with people from the Trans and other community members who are in the placemaking just to see our projects. And then the other two will be installed in the afternoon. And so two will be um, by Mills Hardware, one on each side of the street. And they, they're not going to be all four. There's not enough money in AARP's budget to do two on each side. So it'll be one on each side, and then one at the sandwich shop, and across the way by Max Momo in the parking lot side. Um, and there's a display, a public display at Mills Hardware that people can look at. Uh, it was at town meeting, but it has some photos and a map of where ours are going to be. Um, we're planning on May 19th a mini better block to celebrate our three art projects, the mural, banners, and the benches, and then talk about the fold out as well. So we'll have some fun things going on on that day. And the updates on the blowouts are there's not money for sensors in them. We thought there could be permanent sensors in them. So what's going to happen instead is Rita from Two Rivers. Two Rivers. Um, is going to install temporary ones two weeks before they go in and then two weeks right after they go in so we can have a pedestrian and um, auto count and speeds and things like that. So we'll have some data pre and on um, two weeks. Nice. And there will be planters in them for beautification. Um, I don't have an image of what they look like, but they'll be safely installed in the holdout and not, you know, where they're going to get hit or anything. And so um, ARP is going to fund some beautification plans and things as well. Hmm. And um, yeah, that's banners. the update so far. We did banners. Yep, and yep, are those hanging? Yeah, we have it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll be installing the hardware and the banners around the same time and, and doing all the striping and the crosswalks and all that too. Right around that right before that. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yep. Yeah, we're going to have a big public walk on May 19th and um, have the artist be at the benches, the banners, the mural. <laughs> walk all three and learn about the projects and celebrate the artists on that day, which I'm super excited about. That was on the 19th? Yes. So being temporary, how um, fragile are they? How, how likely are they to deteriorate? Or how long are we going to be able to have them in place, I guess? is more At least a couple of years oh, cool. um, if we take them out for the winters. And they can be put in other places, too, if people decide to try to different crosswalks. Um, we'll learn how to put them in. And there's a pool that goes into the concrete, and they'll teach us all of that. And there's surprisingly a few tools that you need to even do it. They um, better block flies them on their plane, you know, with them, all the tools and everything. And um, so it's pretty easy, it sounds like. So yeah. yeah, they should. They could last. I think they set up to five years, or depending on weather and, and things. But yeah, we can use them a couple of years at least. They're like big rubber Lego pieces, basically. Right. Yeah. So. So what is the time frame in which we we're looking at using them each season here? Then it can be up to the road crew to figure out, but you know, they'll, they'll go in May 15th now, and then I'm assuming they'll want to bring them up before the snow. And so that can be up to them, I think. Do we just decide? It's so like end of October, yeah, or so I was first of November, 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 November. November. Yeah, they're going to be there during the installation for that reason, so they don't want to do it. Mm -hmm. much of a, a, a big deal to take them up anyway. So we can yeah. do it pretty quickly if we need to. So, yeah. But if it enhances pedestrian traffic in the downtown and making sure that fall pedestrian tourism type time frame is fully taken advantage of. And, yeah, I think the and idea is just probably, hitting it sometime in early November before the- Yeah, we go as late as we can and take them up. But I, the point is I think that you know a storm's coming. Yeah. We can get out and get them taken out pretty quickly. So maybe, maybe we'll just go as long as we can, as long as, as, long as weather will allow us. Yeah. 
Good. Sounds cool. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you. Any other questions or anything? Anybody else? Any public comment? All right. Seeing none, we'll move on. Our first appointment this evening is at 615 um, with the ATB Club. Is it, are you guys all set now or you want to wait to reach six? Okay. I'm Ken Carter. This is Chuck Hyman. Central Mont Quad Runners ATV Club. We come in every year to ask permission to use the trails that we've been using and to make sure there's no issues. It's something to address if there is. Does anybody have any issues that we need to be aware of? Not that I've heard. No. Not that I've heard. No. And you, you've got the map on file with the trails that you're using. So, yeah. yeah. Okay, so we have an updated map. We have a yeah, they have, they're using fourth class roads and, and some um, private, private, private roads land. that are crossing town roads and stuff like that. So that's the only thing you're asking for permission yeah. for. Yeah. So yeah. we typically have a map that describes and those trails haven't changed. No, haven't changed no. So if you don't have one on hand, then you can get one. Right, I'll right. check and see if I don't have one. Yeah, yeah. just get it reach out to you. Most of, our, most of the town roads are class four. There are some sections of class three we use to connect with or cross or, yeah. yeah so do you guys have to give them uh, like we did the snow bills the crossings do we have to do a, a motion for that yeah that's what they're yeah, asking that's what they're asking for and that's, what what asking for. And that's the only reason the, the map gives us and the list of roads gives yeah. us the uh, clarity on what we're giving them permission right. for well, I'll make sure that it sounds like we have a map. Did you provide, provide that last year? Yes, I believe we did. We have at some point. I know we've seen it. I did. We talked about it. Yeah. Okay. We'll see if we can track it. I think the only discussion we had last year is that we were missing some pieces of the map, if I remember right. We didn't have the full set. Okay. Of course, the key was last year. This time. That's right. So the, but we had something to do with We didn't either get pieces of it or. The map changed and we didn't get an updated map or something like that. So maybe if we just make sure we work together on it. Yeah, is there any way you can just mm -hmm. get us a fleet? I can, I can send it. Okay. okay. Electronically? Is that yeah. you have a... I should be able to. I'm just looking to see if I had one here with me. So I believe that was the only discussion no, that we had last like year. That. I can't remember exactly. You've got a better memory than I do. <laughs> just, just where yeah, you know, some of those crossings were. There was a couple of roads that was up in the air last year, mm -hmm. and it could have been one of those things that uh, you know, one manager going out, one coming yeah, in, that might not have ever got you can bring updated or <laughs> amended. So yeah. make, make sure that's right there. You just want what's in Bethel, correct? Oh yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just to back you up so that when people say, "Well, you guys got permission to use yeah. these roads," and then the town office has the map and it's clear. Yep. So, entertain a motion. Yeah, the motion that we approve the use of the the uh, trails and crossing the roads by the ATV club. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. All set. Just make yeah. sure we get those maps all yeah. together. And You'll have them in the next few days. Yep. Really all right. Thank Perfect. You. All right. Thank you. You well. Thank you. Thanks. All right. <coughs> Ellie's just coming in now. I think we have a little bit of time before we get to Ellie. So we can give her a little bit of time to settle in if we want to move on. Move on with some of our other part of the business. Are you expecting many, many others, Ellie? Okay, so we'll give you a little bit more time then. All right. So uh, we can move ahead. Uh, we'll go into the water and sewer um, budgets. As we had talked about at the last meeting, um, and there's been some sidebar discussions on the side about um, just getting that out there a little sooner this year. So it gives us an opportunity to get the information publicly. Um, and then we'll give us one or two meetings to uh, address any comments before 
before uh, doing the rates. I know in the past it's been a, this comes to the meeting and there's a rate on it and we approve it and it just moves on from there <laughs> without any justification. So I think this year it'd be nice to get a little bit of a discussion. Uh, the main thing tonight would be, did everybody um, get the information in their packets in regards to the water and sewer? Yep. Um, yep. Proposals. Okay. I mean, really, it might change your uh, fees a little bit, increase them, but um, I just need to clarify with him. I think my 613 might be off because I based it on a different number than what um, okay. he thought it should be based on. So, but since this is a proposed discussion, I think we'll hammer it out and get it to you. Mm -hmm. So the so the information at hand tonight is is a living document that we're still you know finalizing. So any of the numbers that we discuss are are not set in stone yet, um, and they might not even be the final number that we have, but that's our closest working document that we have to date, so. Um, I think it'll be all three bills except for maybe that one right there, but like I said, I just sent Tim an email at the end of the day today. I had a nice visit with Greg and Therese today and answered <clears throat> a lot of questions that I had about the figures. Not so much the, the, the computations of the um, EUs and whatnot, but how it impacted the budget as opposed to what we had in the town report mm -hmm. and what we had, you know, in the budget that's in effect right now, and they they answered all the questions that I had about it. And uh, the only other one that I came up with afterwards, two things: um, the 67 million figure mm -hmm. is that based on water coming back in through the sewer plant, or is that actual water going out? Water going out. Into, into the, we have got a master public. meter on both of our wells. Okay. And that's and okay. daily logs of that, and that's mm -hmm. the calculations. Okay. Meter, All, right. All right. And so then. We, it's not really apples to apples when they're coming back in because we only have half as many. So we actually have. Right. We've extrapolated a little bit and we've done a multiplier of one and a half times, assuming there's a. to make up for that difference to kind of give us a general idea of what we're. what we should have been seeing coming back to the, the sewer. Plant. If you had them all, if, all if everybody was on the system, yeah, because yeah, I know we lived up on Mills Drive, we had water but no sewer, no right. town sewer. So we've tried and to a kind of number of different factors. Try to kind of make a, a, an equation that kind of accounts for that. Yeah. It's not exactly like it needs, but, mm -hmm. but the main number is based on the, the actual pump of water. Yep. So the, I guess the main number is just to kind of get it out there in the public eye, so that if there are any questions over the next couple of weeks, we can address it at the next meeting. Um, prior to taking action. I, I don't, the intent tonight wasn't to take any action on the proposed water rates. Um, that's completely up to the board, but <coughs> the, uh, it was more of an informational, let's get it out there so people know what's coming um, and should allow them two week notice to come in the next meeting and propose any questions they might have or concerns. Um, so just looking at the rates, the current um, EU rate is $100.92, and the, the proposed rate this year is a 15% increase um, on the EU, which is 116.12 in EU. And this kind of runs in line with what we've been doing the last two to three years with, we knew where we needed to get to, and we've been trying to take it in smaller increments um, to get to the, the target. Which we're still trying to find exactly where that target is, but we're getting very close to it. Um, so the the biggest changes right now is 15% uh, increase um, to the EU rate, and we've we've had quite a bit of discussion in regards to the vacancy rate in the town, um, and what that is, and does the number make sense? Where should it be? And and through uh, Greg and Therese um, doing research on that. Plus, going back and actually looking at uh, what our water ordinance states is the water ordinance in the state in the town of Bethel uh, states that the vacancy rate should at least cover the fixed cost of the system. So, which I guess makes sense, right? So, um, according to the fixed cost, the fixed cost represent uh, sixty-eight point nine six percent of the overall water budget. 
So by using um, the water ordinance that we have, um, that we haven't really been following, um, and, and making that calculation based on the 68.96% uh, that would bring our vacancy rate from $25 to $80.08 um, a quarter. So that's in line with our, our policy. Um, so where the $25 in the past came from, don't know, but um, it, the $25 that had been the vacancy rate wasn't covering the fixed costs um, to service that, that building, even though they're not using water, but it's delivered water, mm -hmm. so. So, Chris, is, is the, the vacancy, is the, oh, go ahead. It's the, it's the, in essence, it's the rental, it's the hookup. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. In essence, it's the cost that we, even if we weren't pumping any water. That's right. Well, yeah. 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 Right. So is the, is the vacancy rate based on a monthly amount? Like if the, if the, so let's say it is an apartment in a building that's vacant. If it's only vacant for a month, that doesn't apply to the vacancy rate. It's, it has to be for a quarter before the vacancy rate the could be utilized. Uh, my short experience here is that it's, no one really says, like they don't come in and say, oh, right. I was on a vacancy rate, but now my apartment is filled. We could prorate it if we knew that, mm -hmm. but we generally don't know that. And that's right. one of the reasons that Greg just did a recent survey yeah. um, put out to see who has what. And some of the other issues okay. that we had with the calculations of the EU rate in the past has been, has been because we haven't, um, when we did the EU, EU rates the last few years or more than that, we haven't been calculating in the vacancy rate people as well. Um, so that number we had been, been budgeting has been slightly lower than where we should have been because we weren't factoring in the, the vacancy. Undercharged. Yeah. Well, yeah so the vacant, so the, the non-vacants were paying the difference of the vacancy. Or not even. They weren't because paying. They weren't yeah, they weren't charging even. enough. Because they, yeah, right. Because exactly. the calculation was inadequate. Right. Yes. So what we've done is we've taken each vacancy and given it an EU calculation of 0.69, whatever it is, 689, yeah. uh, to do that final number, so that we can do that final calculation. And get our rate. The the other number, and and this is this number, the next number for the paper, is the, <laughs> next, the next number, um, uh, which is is your cost per thousand gallons of of water metered. Um, we currently, the current is on 90 cents, 90 cents per 1,000 gallons metered. It, what we had found out going through this process is that 90 cents doesn't even cover the cost of the water metered per thousand. Okay. Um, so again, where maybe, maybe that made sense years ago and it just was never updated. But um, so the proposed rate for the metered gallons um, per 1,000 gallons is, is proposed right now at three dollars and fifty nine cents so it's a it's a large large increase but we're getting to where the cost of water is so so those um, four metered accounts that we have you know when when they 350 or 315? 359 359 Thank you. because these these four metered counts the way I, I believe it works is they pay for the EU and it comes with a certain volume of water yeah, and if, if they use more than that volume of water, then they have to pay, right so now they're paying 90 addition. cents per thousand gallons. Um, so what was happening is if they were drawing that water, when they went past that, at that point we were losing money every time they drew water. Mm -hmm. um, um, the, excuse my ignorance, what does the EU stand for? Equivalency unit. Equivalency unit. And equivalency unit, unit is what it, yeah. Okay. Which yeah. But the, that's basically because a thousand gallons is 2.7 equivalent units, right? Because your a thousand gallons is, that rate is being, is based off of the <clears throat> charge for the $377, that's 377 gallons yeah. per day that, that go with the equivalent unit. Mm -hmm. right. right. So it's all based on actual calculations off of the EU that's cost. Right. Yes. Right. So you have, an EU, you have an EU cost breakdown 
and everything is being calculated back and forth off of that. This is no longer arbitrary, right. or we're trying to be as, right. as in, right. unarbitrary as right. possible. We're still using the EU methodology, but we're well, yes, but, but now we're quantifying what that EU is because the ninety per thousand or the twenty five vacancy in the past, those are entirely arbitrary. Yeah. So that basically yes. makes the entire EU system arbitrary. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. So yeah. now moving to a more accurate calculation on EUs and then using calculation to determine both the per thousands and the vacancy gives us some more validity. Right. Oh, absolutely. I think it makes it easier too since we do customer service for the water. It's a lot easier to be able to say you know, how much a thousand gallons or what it is or what your daily rate is. It's certainly easier to, to quantify to a user now instead of saying, oh, you're one EU, which somebody might not understand at all. So, and it definitely is all based in science and fact of what we actually pumped because Kelly and Tim have been tracking that for a while. Yeah. It also allowed us to quantify the EU based on because we're cap recapturing our loss. Right. Mm -hmm. So we're pumping what, you know, what we're pumping is not what we're billing, you know, in the past. So everybody has that problem. Right. But it also gives us some incentive to find the leaks. Absolutely. And right. to, That's what uh, Tim was saying. And it also allows us to, in a kind of a roundabout way, if we assume that two tan gallons per day, which is AWWA for one EU, Let's just say that that's a, that's a solid number, an accurate number. It allows us. We've calculated here what an actual EU, how much, how many that actually is, mm -hmm. based on what we pump. So it'll show us how much water we've lost, what percentage of water we've actually over lost. What the, what the, over what the recommended amount is, or yeah. the industry standard amount is. Right. Yeah. It helps us to track our loss there too. Mm -hmm. so. so. Yeah, I think we. I mean, Tim and Teresa, they work real hard on this stuff, especially this thing here. This was, this was three or four or five of the discussions that we all had about exactly. trying to make the math. Yeah. It was great sense. having the breakdown of ca how the calculations were done and the, yeah. the, the possible ways you could get to the same result. Yeah. That was actually really yeah. helpful. Yeah, we were trying to, I had a synopsis intended to break down and we were just kind of running the numbers and then today we were um, kind of calculating it out to see to use the same methodology for sewer. And, but it was it was very interesting and it definitely you know took all three of us because you'd think about it and then you'd go home and be like, wait a second. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, so it was definitely worth it. Mm -hmm. and I think and it's it's it's, it's nice to have the backup on it, and you know, I know the two years I was on the board, you know, other than just saying this was the proposed rate last year versus this year, we really didn't have a lot of information to go on. So, um, on that way too, we can continue to calculate. You know, next year we're not reinventing the wheel. We can go back and say right. some were EUs without meters. It's mm -hmm. and it's nice to know that you know. In our water ordinance, it did state that vacancy rate should be should be covered, you know, should at least cover the fixed cost percentage. Um, so, so if you don't know what your fixed cost percentage is, then you can't <laughs> well, charge yeah. more. And I think that might have been so that, that might have been some of the issues in the past. To, be, mm -hmm. yeah. to actually capture that finally. So on the on the water end of things, you know, uh, the EU is going to go up 15 percent, uh, which has been the same as the last two years in a row. If I remember right, it's been 15, 15, and 15. Um, and then the, the vacancy rate is going to cover our fixed costs um, going forward. So that, um, as well as our our dollars per thousand gallons, um, as we found in the past that. I just don't think there was probably enough research that was done to know what that cost was. Um, and it's nice to see that all laid out here. It's, um, I think what did, is this, um, that piece there, is that public? Do we have that on the website, do you know? No, not it's yet. not, it's an internal. If not, document. maybe, I don't know, maybe that. Oh, the first page. Yeah, yeah the yeah, first page. That. that might be a very handy one to put out there. I'll um, give it to um, Kelly. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll put it on the website. Because, I mean, it, you know, even, even if you're really not all into the, the knowledge of how this all works, it seems to make sense when you read it, you know, yeah. without so, having yeah, any the other one that has all the degree in it. The math on it, you want that on the web too or not? Well, I don't know. I mean, if you get into it, it's that's kind of confusing. Yeah. You really, yeah. yeah. If you get all the calculations out there, you really can get in a headspace. Yeah, you can, because yeah. we did that just internally. Yeah. Yeah, kind of what the yeah you're going to have people coming there. asking you. Yeah. Can we put an effective date on there, too, just as a reminder to folks of when they, this 
when you get your bill on July 1st, July 1st or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's why we wanted to have it. Usually we have this discussion, if I remember right, Carl, we have it in like first of June. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. First just meeting of June. The, and just before yeah, it was late last year. Yeah. Yeah. So so yeah. It's, yeah. You should do it in May, right? Yeah, not June. Because you want to make it out in your CCR and it goes out. Yeah, it was it was it came out late last year because of the transition. But yeah. No. Well, was, I think even before okay. it was always we'll, June. We right. we'll get it done. We'll get it started as soon as we have the yeah. next meeting. As soon as we approve, yeah. if we approve the budget at the next meeting, then we'll. Yeah. we'll get so it. I think we'll. Because uh, the budget is pretty set. It's just like yeah. I said, I'm just recalculating that one thing. But yeah. it definitely that way can, information can go in the consumer confidence report that has to go out. Makes sense. Yeah. And then on the. On the sewer end, do we have any other water discussions? Um, you know, water is definitely the one that's, you know, has the change to it. On on the proposed sewer rates, currently we're at $175.97 per EU, um, and the proposed rates are to stay the same, so there won't be any increase in EU rate with the proposed um, uh, sewer rate schedule currently. Um, there has been, just like in water, there has been corrections for the vacancy rate. The current vacancy rate for sewer is $50. And um, just like with water, to cover the fixed, um, to cover the fixed cost with the sewer uh, would be $120.70. So that'll be an increase of $70.70 um, on the vacancy rate for sewer. And right now, there's probably not any need to read off the per thousand gallons because we're still kind of working on that figure. But as of right now, uh, currently we're, we're charging uh, metered accounts two dollars and eighteen cents per one thousand gallons. And um, just like with the water, that two dollars and eighteen cents per one thousand gallons isn't covering our fixed cost. Um, when somebody uses over their equivalency. So um, we're still working on that calculation. Um, the, the number that we have that we're working with right now is $6.13 per 1,000 gallons. Um, but uh, it sounds like there's a little bit more work with Teresa and Tim and, and Greg on that until we uh, know exactly what that will be. But we should have that finalized by next week. I'll, I'll tomorrow. So. I'm just looking at something. How many are, are the same meet, water metered accounts as also metered sewer? Or how many? Yeah, three of the four. Three of the four. Yeah. Right. So the um, So the intent at the next meeting would be to put it on the uh, agenda as well. And uh, if there are no are no uh, big public comment or inquiries in regards to it would be to propose and move forward with the rates um, at that time. So. The only real changes in the budget as to what we had proposed, I, mean, I came at a 15% increase just in a different methodology for and loop sewer. We actually worked it out in a different way, but we kind of ended up with the same thing. The only thing we tweaked in the budgets themselves were the addition for the um, grant match for the um, trench box um, and then basically depreciation, which is something we haven't carried before, which we need to carry. And we really should be covering carrying probably about twice what we are, but we know what Rome wasn't built in the day. So we're right. gonna, at least we're starting with that number. So those are really the only changes, I think, as well as in the um, town report and what we've seen before for a budget, so. Yep, so good. Any other discussion in regards to the water and sewer bowl rates? You wanted that table like Feel free, that. come on over. <laughs> should, no should I feel personally offended? No offense. Just take, it'll take a few minutes for the camera on. So, um, so we'll, uh, so we will, um, I don't know, we, we table that for the next, and we keep it on. Yeah. And, uh, and then we will get this, this piece here onto the website so everybody can look at that. And uh, really appreciate it. Yeah, I think that's a great breakdown, and it, um, it's actually nice to know that there were 
an ordinance and how much we should have been charging that we weren't charging and um, it, it really makes it easy so so um, it is 6 30 so we can uh, does the recreation committee have everybody that yes. you guys are waiting on yes and just to give you um, a background um, um, as you know um, um, from minutes and stuff, um, Corey Stearns um, had um, gotten um, Spawn Ranch to come and um, work with us. Um, um, a gentleman from Spawn Ranch came from California and did a workshop um, um, design class for us to give our input on what kind of a skateboard park that we wanted, and then um, in, and then. He took our ideas, um, we met in October, he took our ideas and then he made up, made a design and, and sent it in to us in December. And um, the committee has incorporated um, some kids, I'd say kids that are skateboard enthusiastic, uh, 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 enthusiasm kids from, from Bethel I have been a part of our meetings. And then um, Shane here and Tim and uh, another guy named Scott Mitchell has been a part of our committees. And we looked at uh, the design, so this is Scott, and we looked at the design that Vince sent us in December and there were so many things that we um, were not comfortable with in Vince's design. So these nice gentlemen, Shane and Tim and Scott, got together and they've been working on the design that they thought would, would better work in Bethel. And so we are presenting the design that they have come up with to you to get your input and, um, and to see where we can go from here. Um, Vince has agreed to conference call with us on May 3rd to, to see what the feedback is and to keep working and see if we can tweak, um, tweak and see what we can do um, with our design. So that's the background. And in the packet, and I'll have Shane um, explain to you the design. Can you show the materials? Emphasis, this is a preliminary design. But it does include the um, training features that we would like to see more focus on. Okay. Two more. Carl, you'll notice on the digital versions, there are portions of the picture cut off that this has. So there's sort of, it's like when it got scanned, it just yeah, snipped corners yeah. off. But they rotated so I can see. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. By way of introduction, I'm Shane Kinsley. I'm a member of the REC committee now. Um, I started riding at BMX when I was 14 years old. I stopped riding shortly after I got married for a little while. Yeah. Uh, but I got back on my bike last year. So playing playing this game again. Uh, we've got Scotty and Tim. They're both skaters in their twenties. They know what they're doing. And we've we've been beating up this animal for a few months now. Uh, almost weekly meetings, the cockadoodles. Um, who've been very helpful by the way. Very supportive of the work. Um, we came up with terrain that we believe represents all age and ability levels uh, for riders, skaters, scooters, um, inline skaters. Um, so kids of any age, young and old, uh, can go to this park and feel like there's something by way of terrain that represents what they would be interested in doing. Um, that's, it's not an easy feat, but we're, 
we're beating this animal up pretty good. So um, before you go, how does the footprint, has the footprint changed at all in terms of um, the area that we had talked the, about? The original allocation was a little bit smaller than this. Um, it was 125 on the long side mm -hmm. and then like 90 or something on the back side. And then uh, roughly 70 wide. Uh, we've grown it just a little bit. This is 120 wide by 80. Um, so it's, it's, it's yeah, absolute rectangle, um, but it's very much consistent with uh, the area that's been designated for the <coughs> skate park. Um, it corresponds exactly to the same width of the tennis courts. So if the tennis courts form this rectangle, we're just off one end of it, extending 80 feet back mm -hmm. uh, from that. So by coinciding our slab with the tennis court slab, I think it'll, it'll make sense um, topographically too. So I'm not sure if you were in on that. Yeah, I know you weren't. Uh, there was discussion of moving the skate park to the north to integrate it with the tennis courts. So the, eventually when the tennis courts go in, they will share, if you will, a slab with this or share a space with this. You'll just have the tennis courts and then this will be right next to it. Um, part of that reasoning, I think, was to bring it down slope and get it away from the big hill so that we weren't worried about having a big wall uh, right. with that slope coming down. Yeah. Cutting slope and so that's right. then that kind of explains what he's talking about a little more. That it gets yeah. moved to the north. And if you're seeing some of the topographical um, information on the, on the train, it's a way, until you get really far up the hill, it is very, very mellow slope. Yeah. Um, so by, by cutting down just a little bit into the ground and elevating the tennis courts just a little bit, It'll, it won't be as much of a, an extreme dig into the hillside right. or as, as much of a, you know, a mountain that your tennis court's on. Uh, it'll promote really good drainage for both uh, features um, by having just a little bit of space underneath them. Yeah, okay, thank you. <coughs> We've got um, a variety of funding options. Um, We've got probably a 100K so far available. Um, we're looking at an AARP grant. We're also looking at a land and water conservator conservatory matching grant. Um, and Scotty's been working on a GoFundMe um, to bring in some outside sourcing. Um, that'll be quite helpful. We'll, you want to talk about that for a minute, Scotty? Um, yeah, um, I actually went to the GoFundMe page and in order to start it, they obviously asked for a small per per percentage for the donation, that's how they run the platform, you don't have to make money too. Um, the only thing is, in order to start that, which on the first page you have to pick a category on what the um, donation is going for, it's either yourself, which it obviously isn't, someone else, which they take a 2.9% and every donation they get 30 cents on the donation, so that's just standard. But if it's for someone else, as in the category, it's 2.9% that they get. But I don't know if this is considered a nonprofit or a charity, which you have to have like the 501, whatever. C3, no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if that falls into that category, then it goes up to 7.9%. So I couldn't really make the page yet without knowing if that's what we are, or if that's not what we are, or how we're supposed to categorize that. We're not a 501C3. No, we're, we're not. 501. We're not. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And all governments are nonprofit and Tax exempt. Okay. We're considered not profit. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, we would be in that category then. So that's basically what I need to hear from you guys before I could continue that page because that's literally the first page. That's what you have to. So um, the important thing to consider with raising funds for for the municipality is that you need to work with Therese or with Greg so that you're getting because it's not. The Recreation Committee isn't raising funds, it's the Town of Bethel raising the funds. Yeah, that's, so, that's basically why we're coming here to see yeah. like all the fine points of the details before we actually go and make the page. Because I'm pretty sure as soon as you make the page, there's only so many changes you can do to it. And I don't want to make it as a not a non-profit and find out that we are come to this meeting and I have to change everything. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's got to be something similar to managing grants. Yeah, and you're going to need a account number. Stuff. Well, there's also the, uh, I don't know if this would work or not, but uh, an option that was kind of presented to us is to donate it to the town. I don't know if that would, like if it goes into somebody's name and then you donate it to the 
like to our cause. I don't know if that's something that that's probably the best way to do it. Would be to make a donation to the town because I don't know if they're gonna if, if the town is gonna be able to do a, a, a GoFundMe page. I, do they not have an option for municipal government uh, not, or government? Like, not in the three categories. In like there's the three categories you can choose for the donation, and yeah. then down in the bottom, I took a picture of it. Down in the bottom, here, I'm just gonna show you so I don't have to read them all. See, down on the bottom, this, you can pick through all these categories, but that doesn't change like the percentage or anything. So I was thinking like it could even be like the nonprofit charities down here, or it could be the, uh, what was it, community and neighbors. It can like fit in a number of those. I think that my oh, gut yeah. tells me, and Teresa, tell me if you, what do you think, but if somebody else were to do the GoFundMe page and you, you donated that money to the town, yeah, that's what we that think. would be the best, in my opinion, that would be the best way to do yeah, it. If you come in, I can help you because you're gonna need an account because they're gonna have to figure out where to put the money in. Right. Yeah. So if you come in, I'm happy to help you. Okay, but if you were like friends of the skateboard park, go fund me, then the friends of the skateboard park could donate the money. This to the goes town. worldwide, like literally it should. I know, but what I'm getting right. at is that the, if the municipality yeah. can't oh, have yeah. its own page, yeah. right. then you raise money as friends of the skateboard park, yeah. and then friends of the skateboard park donates the money to the town. That's probably the best way to do yeah. it. That. What do you think, Therese? Yeah, you have a better gonna, idea. We, well, we've done I've done a, this process before to raise money, and, and you just have to have an account number so that we can see what comes in, and you, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it doesn't run for a specific amount of time. Like, can't you put a time limit on it? Um, the, this is I didn't. This is the first page, so I didn't. Yeah, pick anything I'm just not sure if we would actually. Be, I mean, I don't, I've never done the GoFundMe stuff, but I don't know. Be a little leery of the eligibility of a, of a government. Um, just want to make sure that it functions. Right. Yeah, I, I really would. I think I would feel more comfortable. I don't know about the board, but with the donation, I did. Right, yeah, so, the uh, you know, the nonprofit status is in those numbers, and the tap municipality has a it's a 501 number, but it it isn't a C3. And if it's not, and if it asks it, for C three, it, it says C three, then it, then we can't. Right. We can't be a part of it because we're not a C three. We're a. That's where I'm concerned. Something or whatever. So, yeah, it doesn't say. So, so does that mean we're not a nonprofit then? If you're not the. Three no, we're a nonprofit. We're, we're just not a C five hundred one C three nonprofit. Well, they ask that when you click on it. That pops so, right. So again, I would go with with somebody else. Okay. Compiling the money and then the donation. I think that's probably the better way to do this. But you need to get with Therese so that she can get yeah, you lined out. Yeah, yeah. 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 Awesome. Yeah, we're not trying to dismiss the idea. Just trying no, to make sure yeah. it works. That's, that's why we're bringing it here because we don't make want to sure trust the right. right. We, we want to make sure, sure that we can right. do this fundraiser. Yeah. We have <coughs> people of it. Yeah. 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 And before we do it. It goes correctly and smoothly. Right. And uh, I've also reached out. There's professional skateboarders that are out in California now, and like they grew up here and stuff, and from Vermont. And I've already reached out to them, and they said they'd be more than happy to share it. They all have sponsors, like Mountain Dew and everybody that they ride for. So there's possibility of actually getting some like serious money from maybe an actual brand that really represents skateboarding in like, the whole world. I have a question for the committee. Um, what do you folks think you need? To be able to approve, you know, this kind of thing. Like, for if, if I say, hey, we've got a 120 by 80 that matches the tennis court. Um, what more information or designs do you need to see before you guys can say yes? This is this is in the spirit of what we're trying to do, and you know, budget dependent, you guys can proceed to create this type of training. Well, I, the budget. We really, I think that that's what it really comes down to is, okay. um, and we can, uh, we could, in the past we've already basically gone through this step at least once before and, and it really comes down to supporting it at the board level um, to be able to justify it to the town, to the townspeople, we've, we need to know what it's going to cost. Sure. And, um, Clearly, the fundraising you're doing is going to be a great advantage, but I think we, that's what we had a year ago. We had a, a very detailed budget that broke down 
what the town was going to have to contribute, what the and what the um, grants and and other resources were going to be able to contribute to it. I think the other thing too that was important uh, to the community as well is, you know, we did have a budget, and I can't remember. We've been back and forth. It was I think last time it was like eighty something when we checked last, but um, eighty from the town. Yeah. yeah, I think the um, I think the other thing the important thing to look or keep in mind too is even if all of a sudden we came up with two hundred thousand dollars, right? You want to make it bigger. I know the townspeople, anyways. They voted not just on a skate park, but also a footprint of that skate park. And and there are some people that want to make sure that there's ample green space still available to do other activities. So um, just keep in mind on that. It sounded like that's what we had heard mm -hmm. before was yeah, because the uh, green space as well. So it sounds like right now you're pretty close to on original footprint, yeah, which is good. I would just say if all of a sudden somebody donated a large amount of money and you, your budget doubled, it doesn't necessarily this mean that we're going to be able to double this that is footprint. Our design. So yeah. it, do you, do you design? Do you no, like no, this is going to change a hundred times before we're done. Yeah. There are a lot of semantics, but this is the spirit of what we're trying to do. So, and, and, I, and I think on our end of things, you know, when it comes down to the actual design of the, the park, what's in the park itself, inside that footprint, I mean, I, I don't think that any of us five are really going to tell you how many rails and benches and things you should have in there. It's going to be more, I that's, that's the, your thing, yeah. make sure we're on the, budget the, and the, on the footprint. The level of creative, creativity yeah. and, and uh, um, inclusivity that you've gone through is what we're looking for. It's great. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's mm -hmm. you're gonna come. You're you're gonna come to us and recommend recommend to us what should be in there. The main thing is, like, I think we we're more about the technical and budgetary issues that we need to make sure that our recreation center is well represented to the entire town and that the skate park takes care of a portion of the people's interest, but it doesn't manipulate the the ground space down there and that it's complementary and that it's within a reasonable budget or that there's funding brought to it from other sources. Now do we have a, uh, a time frame right now on what we're looking at for um, you know, bidding or executing work or? Oh, well, um, yeah, we don't know. Um, I mean, we're, we're, we have our next meeting May 3rd and we're um, setting up a conference call with Vince so we can correspond. But we don't, and, um, and, but we don't know what the framework of the time to, to like get a, t a permit for this or get, um, or get bids out or, you know, go for bidding or. Next summer. Because this has to go through zone too. Yeah. So you've got zoning, you've got to go through a bid process. You've got right. To contractors, which so, are probably already full. So well, the, and the land, the land and conservation grant we were hoping was going to be available this summer so that we could possibly start the groundwork in the fall mm -hmm. and it's not available this summer it's available for next summer so it's, it's, the application is in the fall right yeah. so that's what we're shooting for can you phase this in case the budget comes up short i don't know in the way it is I don't know i'm it's, sure we can the monolithic slab I'm it, sure we can make something plain. Nice. Just something maybe to add to your you talk about free plans. Just yep. in case the budget falls short, they can it can be phased somewhere, so it's not incomplete when it's done. Yeah, like leave the middle middle island part of the middle we, island or something. There's also another grant that um, Patrick Henley has agreed to work on, and I also got information from there was in seven days another. Town is getting a skateboard park, and they got money from a, a, a Thorogen grant. Yeah. Um, so, so we're trying for all those different um, avenues to 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 budget and to get money, and so we can. can Sounds great. Right. Mm -hmm. So realistically, we're probably looking at next summer. You guys, what you think? Or, I think that would be a safe bet. Safe bet. Uh, end of August, because you can't do it. Yeah, you know, 
you kind of get into the season, I think most contractors have probably already got right. probably a pretty full workload already. But, right. but yeah. forge ahead and give yeah. us the, yeah. get it. Yeah. 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 So um, in the digital version here, there's a whole lot of colors. Is that just to, so that each one of the elements step, stands yeah. out? So it's yeah. basically going to be a, a, a bare concrete? We, we added some green, so it's not all just gray. And that would be painted concrete? Um, so that they would be green? I mean, in the in the flesh, what's it going to look like? We green. tend to have dye from green. Like this? Uh, yeah, more or less. Yeah, OK. It's like a color added. Yeah. Yep. That's all there's some talk about using the white granite on some of this. Yeah. Is that still an option? There's some ledges over on the right-hand side, if you're looking that way. Uh, some flat ledges on the yeah. The, over the spare space, some flat ledges, and you know, we're in the you know, foothills of this beautiful granite quarry up here that seems to be booming right now with all the products that are going on. And I thought it would be a really neat idea to bring a little bit of natural elements of this you know, geographic area and, and bring down some of that white granite and make some ledges out of it, and uh, just to bring in a little bit of that. And plus, that stuff's really fun to, to skate or ride and really rare to find. lasts a long time. And they have the, the green. Yeah. yeah, some of it. So that'd be some color to it. Yeah. We want to make sure there isn't too much solo load, though. If you had asphalt, the, yeah. the heat oh, yeah. would be ridiculous. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. right. If we did flat gray, that'd be boring. So we'll find some, some color that works. That yeah, so I saw the one down in Lebanon today. It looks kind of, it's kind of bland. Yeah. yeah. Is it just gray? Yeah. You know, it, it, there were a lot of folks there using it, though. Oh, it's, oh, yeah. it's usually pretty busy there. There's yeah. a parcel over the country. Yeah. Really nice. There's a nice one outside Denver that's all in the room. Like you can yeah. dye the concrete whatever color you want to make it blend and just kind of be more pleasant visually. That's why we chose all the obstacles that are kind of sticking up so that even the ones that are colored are kind of like <coughs> there so you don't run into them if you're not as an experienced rider or someone. Yeah. Can you do a visual that, that places this um, on the area of the rec For the center? Area, just so you can that. see the. The, how it, uh, yeah, it's just something that shows the whole that whole area there. So how it'll fit. Yeah, It'd be a good thing to have. Yeah, and and like Carl said, I mean, I mean, we're you know, as long as we keep the footprint, you know, somewhat in order and um, our budget in order. I mean, those are the those are the two big things that we'll be looking at as a board. And you know, you guys use your creativity to. To design your footprint, you know, and you know, I don't think you really need to have any um, type of um, approval from us for your your design of what's going to go on inside your footprint. I think you guys are free to do what you want to do, and um, I mean, it'd be nice to you know shoot us designs every once in a while to see where you're at. But I don't think as far as we're considered here, I don't want to speak for everybody, but I don't think we we need to judge you on what needs to be in the park or not. Just just a update on budget footprint, and I think we're we're good to go and time frame on when we might see this. So. And, and making sure that the funding is copacetic with our okay, budget so and after we do that, then then do we then is there some way that we um, have a um, bid bid offers? That would be, have to be something that will be coordinated through the administration. But basically, I mean, the select board has been behind this project right. for several years. Um, and in essence, you haven't changed it at all. I mean, you're continuing to tweak it to make it be closer to, to construction ready. Right. So as far as I can see, we're not really deal. It's not, it's not like you're not re just because you've got a, a new design ish and you've got a new group of people are working on it it's not a new project it was just moving forward with right. one that's that needs some time and so clearly it, when it gets to be that point where the committee feels like you've got the plan is secure and and you've got a sense of funding then you just need to coordinate with greg and therese and make sure that the money and the and the uh, budgeting and the and the Bidding is done in the right order. Um, what did you say? You said something about zoning? Yeah, this has to go through zoning. It's considered a development, a land development. So it'll have to go through zoning. It won't be a problem. 
that will have to do zoning. You mean it just has to have a zoning permit? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. And that means, you know, it, it, probably not an administrative permit, it'll be a, a DRB. And so it'll be a public, it'll be public. So there might be, the only reason I say that is because there might be people out there that can, that may be against it that might speak. Mm -hmm. So it's, but it still has to be yeah, through that public, public process. Yeah. yeah. Two public hearings. Okay. So in summary, we're, we're looking to build a park that will serve generations. Not a parking lot that will be abandoned in five years. Mm -hmm. There are three or four examples within 10 miles. That could Every Vermont park. Yeah. That's why we've been meeting, like uh, Shane, Tim, and I have been meeting every week, basically, going over designs. We sit there and we talk about like who would ride this and what would be like better for everyone in the long run. And then we like made multiple, multiple, multiple things. And this is what this one is like finally tweaked down to. Yeah. Good. Great. Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Just to reiterate that um, um, Caroline, Greg, and I and Deidre got an email from Corey Stearns. And mm -hmm. I, I assume that Carl mm -hmm. and Greg shared it with you. And Corey has resigned from the okay. committee, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's, all, that's all done, right? Yeah. All right. Everybody saw that letter. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Get, you want to get a skateboard as soon as you get that shoulder back? <laughs> I thought that's how you did it. <laughs> that's what happens when you don't have a park and you got to jump off benches downtown. <laughs> Poor Mo. <laughs> All right, so thank you again. We'll uh, move on. The uh, next item that we have up this evening is um, we had a water abatement request. Everybody get the memo? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, <coughs> you know, how in the past did, in the past with these um, abatements, what do we do at this level? So um, you're acting as water commissioner, right? Yeah. You have the authority to abate this if you choose to. Mm -hmm. Teresa's put together a small little memo here to explain the request, and then <coughs> we just discuss it. So at this level, it's just moving it forward or not? It's yeah. approving it or not. Yeah. 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 yeah, basically, yeah. she's, uh, she's at, at our, you know, they're acting as our administrator for mm -hmm. water. Okay. So we just have to decide whether this makes sense. Do we need any kind of documentation about the vacancy from November of 2016? Does it, need, does it need to be? I think he sent me an email. He sent me the whole the history yeah. of the property. Oh, okay. And, and um, when he was there last, when his it the has been on the market there. for a while. So, yeah, he's in California, so we've exchanged a few emails about it and, and um, about who was there when. And, and um, uh, so, you know, so it's been vacant and he was not aware, was never informed you know, that there was a vacancy rate. And um, so I'm, I, I, we weren't here. So I'm inclined to say let's abate it. He still yeah. agrees he's on the hook for another property that he has and he's paying that run right along. And so he's still gonna owe us some money. We just need to make an adjustment. And yeah, that I mean, was he the request the abate, you know, the vacancy rate and wasn't given it or not even informed that there was one, you know, it's, it's uh, but, but I guess. But is he, is he, is he delinquent on these? He is. Yep, but so he's been making payments, and he just I see. when he went back, okay. um, I had reached out to him and found him uh, at Dodgers in California, and we exchanged a couple emails. And then when we went back over it, he was you know he was the one who said, well, hey, you know, I, I haven't even been there. This is when I was been vacant. This is the conversations basically that I've had with the past in the office and where I've gotten. And he said so, um, and he just had never been told. Even though the building was vacant, that there was an option for the rate. So it's a combination. One is that, that he's not a, he's not asking to abate a bill that he can't pay. He's asking no. he's asking for abatement on what is basically overcharges. Basically, yeah, the difference between what the rate <coughs> would have been had he been turned on the vacancy as compared to what. So that's all he's asking for right. abatement is the difference. Um, so it actually sort of, I mean, besides answering this question, what Paul brought up in terms of, and I think may have brought it up earlier, 
um, in our other discussion is when is a part of property considered to be vacant and how do we know? In the past, it appears Is there that something in the ordinance that says that, that um, a, re a residence, when vacant, should be... Is there a form or a... There's no, no form. Should no. there be? Well, Great. Right. So. There should be some, We should have some sort of notification that comes. Yeah. To well, how would how would the, we know? How is the, the town? Ministry, how does the town know that that he's vacated right. the property and gone to Unless California? Unless he's called or emailed or spoke to someone, which we have seen that, where someone is called and then well, their rate hasn't been changed, and you know, so we've been down that road before already. But, you, so, you know, so but there currently is no mechanism. No, there is right. currently nothing. So, you know, and there, something. Yes, but there needs to be. I, I guess what what I'm getting at is that. Sure, he's been vacant. He didn't let us know. We charged him a full rate. We could have charged him for less if we'd known. And so who's responsible? I'm not, I'm just yeah, playing devil again. Yeah. I'm okay. just, whose responsibility is yeah. it that he was overcharged? Well, I think it's interesting that you have a vacancy rate, period. You know, it's just interesting because since, you know, you may have a vacancy rate, but if we can't necessarily shut the water off, then it really is just a big honor system. And I totally think that there should be a mechanism and it should be the onus should be on so the user forward. Yeah. Mm. to, however, if the users did not realize because they were never told mm -hmm. that there was a rate, a vacancy rate, and that's coming out now because things are more transparent, right. you know, that's a little difficult, but I do agree. And I think yeah. that's why putting it on the CCR and letting people know what the rates are and that yeah. there's a separate option. But I think onus should be on them. It should be their responsibility to tell us when it's vacant. And, and uh, so it, maybe part of that, when the rates are every year, when the rates go out, there should be part of that document should be well, describing we the process mm -hmm. for. People. We do a survey every year, but it's only for multifamilies and commercial properties, not for residential properties. I know. Well, I, I mean, so that's, is well, there is there something in the um, water ordinance that says that? In order to qualify for vacancy, you have to have it vacant for X amount of, I don't know, no. six months, a year. No, that's what I was asking. You know, because, yeah. I mean, maybe, to Carl's point, maybe that's something that we need to look at sure. amending well, need, the policy because, the well, yeah, I, mean, I, <laughs> I mean, when I, when I saw this, I, I kind of the same road as Carl, just mm -hmm. kind of looking at it going, you know, who who's, it's a, you know, uh, it should be the homeowner's responsibility to say that it's vacant, right? Right. But they didn't. We've charged them the full amount. Now, a period of time later, they come back to say, yeah. geez, or I didn't know that. they also just However, they found out that there was an actual vacancy rate. But then we also have people, on the other hand, that are, are on vacancy rate that start using their water and don't let us know that. Yeah. So, you know, mm -hmm. what, at what point in this process should we not be notified? Well, then, but the inherent to, issue is that you I don't know, think anybody knows there's even a vacancy rate. So he wouldn't, right. have come, he wouldn't even have come to the town at all because he didn't know in the first place. Right. It wasn't like he knew and just didn't do it. Right. He never even knew that it was there. I think that's the issue that we're talking about. How do right. we get I that out? I agree. I like yeah. the way that you're thinking. That makes more sense. I think yeah. that if there is a vacancy rate, Chris, I think what you're saying makes complete sense. That in fact, it should have to be vacant for a period of time. A period of time. Three months or yeah. a quarter, mm -hmm. quarter because yeah, it's based yeah. on quarters mm -hmm. or yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think that you know, makes sense. And you have to give the town a certain period of heads up. But on the it. owner needs to file that. You know, but it's it's gotta be completely on the owner of the building. Yeah. And you know, and it, it, I mean I'm I don't know, I'm kinda torn between this one because it's yeah. if you And what do you we know, do? turn the water off and then Okay. And then I mean, who, who's residents. to say that you have someone that yeah. rents by the month and you have a That's vacancy exactly. for two months and then they have a renter for two or three months and they have a vacancy for two? Yeah. I mean, this are we going to go back months. and forth and give them vacancies? Mm -hmm. well, I, I've been in other towns. I don't think a renter vacancy is the same as a person not living in their house. Right. Right. Yeah, but this guy here, he bought this house in Sand Hill just to rent it out, if I remember right. I'm not sure. He bought two houses in, in he, he, did. And he bought this one and the one on the corner. One is a rental, and, and the other one I think he lived in, and then Because I thought he was trying to rent both of them, and... So you're right, you, you hit on it. The way we do this is that if it's a vacancy, if they're on vacancy, we shut the water off. Exactly. 
Um, unless it's a multifamily, then it's a bigger issue. But yeah, but where? I mean, we got to define the vacancy because where does this? I mean, hmm. I mean, if I have a house, if I have a house in Bethel that I only stay here for two months of the year, and I, I live in Florida, huh? am I vacant for ten months yes. of the year? Yes, you are. I mean, you know, you but so is we, that we fair? You off. But is that fair at that point? It wasn't well, fair before you know? because you were only being charged twenty five dollars. But if you're covering the fixed cost, then it could be fair. Yeah. Because what are your options? Your options are at least you're collecting the vacancy rate because if you shut them off, you're collecting nothing. Right. So sure. I, I think that they can if they have a shut off. That's a whole other topic. Mm. So I think that, you know, <laughs> the vacancy rate uh, makes big. sense as long as the vacancy rate is enough. 25 bucks was... Right. Didn't bucks. cover anything. No. Right. So, and, and um, so, we have talked... But we are charging him based on our... Point five dollars. It was the old. I mean, you'd have right. to base on that. Because we would have had to do it in the past. And yeah. uh, since, you know, obviously it's my recommendation that you're basically abating the difference between what was between the full rate and then the actual vacancy rate. Yeah. Because and do it now so we can change our vacancy rate. Exactly. Yeah. Well, so in terms of this motion, I'd, I'd make a motion that we. Um, that we grant the abatement request as uh, laid out by Therese. Second. Um, and that so we have a, a second. And all in favor? Aye. 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 sustained, but you <laughs> guys got it. But, well, but it, I, I think it brings up a, a talking does, point of yeah. what, what do we need to do with the um, policy to, to make it well easier to enforce this well, vacancy to rate or not. On the ordinance itself, your right. water ordinance needs to be redone. What you could do in the short time is we could draft an amendment to your existing ordinance. Um, but definitely Greg and Tim and I were talking about redoing the water ordinance and and um, in general, and we have, you know, we have one that is fairly new, that is not ours personally, but we have uh, access to an ordinance that's fairly new, so we could certainly. Do we have like a yearly, I mean, I personally have never seen one, but do we have a yearly homestead questionnaire that goes over, you know, is your property vacant? Is it, I mean, do we have anything like that? No, we send we do a survey for commercial counts and multifamilies. That's it. Nothing for yeah. the regular residential. Well, I'm just wondering how, you know, or should we, you know, come July one when we put the new proposed rates, and maybe, maybe we could look at an amendment to the policy by that time. Oh, I don't yeah. know. Oh, yeah. But maybe put an informational pamphlet in with those proposed proposed rate increases. Right. Of right. you know, did you know that you qualify for vacancy if you meet X Y Z? You know. And, and because I mean to keep going back and you know if someone finds out a year and a half later that they could have been paying no. vacancy I mean yeah. at what point is I mean it's not fair to them but it's also not fair to the town right exactly. now that we're we're yeah. what I've done, on that what I've done in the past is we did what was called availability of service so what we did was you are you stay six months out of the year whatever you for the winter time you leave you call the town and say I want to be on availability of service it's the same concept we go out we shut your water off. So that helps us because we know if you have a leak or a break or something in the winter, it's not leaking into your house. Mm -hmm. So we shut your water off while you're gone. You pay the availability to serve, which would be our, the fee we're talking now. Mm -hmm. When they come back to town, they call up and say, we're back. We come back out, we charge them $10, $15, whatever to go out and turn the water back on and then build it back on the normal rate. That works perfect. There's nothing wrong with that at all, except the multifamily homes where there's four or five units in one house. Mm -hmm. You can't shut those people off, but we get that through the service. So, and as they change, we're, we're hopefully updated on those. It's kind of an honesty system, because we do we do the surveys once a year, and that's what we base our billing for the year. So we, we kind of have that covered. For the, the residential homes, if we could locate all the curb stops, which, if we could locate, <laughs> the concept of shutting their water off, that puts them on vacancy. And then we just turn it back on whenever they want to not be on vacancy. And in turn, and, and then additionally, I think we, we get the word out a little more that you can be on vacancy, mm -hmm. but you're not going to have water. Yeah. Right, because if you have going floors in the winter, you need water. Your seating system needs water. Then yeah, but if you if you eliminate the shutoff and, and reboot, 
and just charge the vacancy rate, you're still getting, the town is still getting the basic cover and charges, and you don't have to have the additional burden of finding the curb stop and turning it on and off. And the resident would know that they can get a better rate if they report that they're not going to be here for six months. Right. I mean, on, right. you know, it's a double-edged yeah. sword, isn't it? Because you don't really want people on the vacancy rate. Right. You want everybody paying the full boat. Yeah, but yeah. if you offer it, right. I mean, it, offer it but they, I think if you offer it they will come yeah, you know, exactly. kind of thing. to yeah. Greg's point if you if you can company the vacancy rate with an actual shut off of the water for that period of time you probably will deter a majority of people from taking the exactly. vacancy rate because yeah. they're not going to want you know, I, I know there's people out there that probably want to defraud the system, but water right. Water. right. Because the truth they can so, see so they may at that point just say, hey, it's worth paying my bill to make sure that I have exactly. water going to the house at all times in case I need it. And, um, and having the water shut off. Especially when it's only 70 percent, it's not like a huge savings. Right. right. Well, it is right now. <laughs> no, I know. But <laughs> once they want to bring right now, it's a deal. I mean, I'm taking vacancy tonight until yeah. July 1st if you can make that. Well, and for him, and also it, it saves uh, people with the lines yeah. freezing up too. So we're shutting right. it off. Well, it actually may be detrimental to the property, too, to shut off the water. If the heating system requires... Well, then they need to the, stay on. If it's a boiler system... Well, that's what we're saying. They'll have to stay on. Yeah, then they're, it's going to be an incentive for them to not... Because they're still using water. water. Right. They're still using water. Because right now, the way I mean, I have it. three or four mm -hmm. places I take care of, and the water is on mm -hmm. during the winter, although there's nobody there, but we still go in and drain the hot water tank and right. you know, those other, other preparation things you do to stop freezing. You know, chance of freezing pipes. And things. Because currently, if they're on vacancy rate, doesn't mean that their water's necessarily shut off. It just means that it's an honesty system saying that's that exactly they're not right. there. Right. So they they could be taking a vacancy, and they could be using water to heat their home. Exactly. Right. So and you're for twenty five bucks to the town to figure out whether or not both apartments are full. Is one vacant? Mm -hmm. Is one not? That's what I mean. It gets yeah. crazy. It gets, it like Riverside's got five or six you know, apartments. And, we were just talking about Carl when, when you stepped yeah. off that, you know, if we could get it together for July first when we put the new proposed rates forward for next year is to include <laughs> a second informational sheet, you know, basically saying yeah. you qualify for vacancy if you meet this criteria. Yeah. And then like Greg had mm -hmm. added, maybe we should add to you don't even have our to ordinance that. that if we are gonna do vacancy, vacancy requires the town to come out. Shut, shut the water, the water off. off. It will come with a one-time fee to either shut off or turn back on, yeah. right? Twenty-five bucks. That way you don't have to. There's nothing to qualify for then. You're, if and you're, if and then when you want to come off vacancy, off. we come out, turn the water back on, and you're good to go. Right? And you're back to full. I guess it's fair for everybody at that point, yeah. right? Can Absolutely. Work with and the timetable doesn't matter because you're not qualifying based on anything. Yeah. It's your choice. Either you want your water or you don't. It's not down as long as we can find curb stops, which we have been working on. <laughs> 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 We're trying. It's a second bridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. cross that one. Yeah. Okay. So we could, we could, you guys could work on. Good. We could work on something. Like I can craft work with craft craft an amendment to your existing yeah. ordinance, right. but we do need to do the entire ordinance. Yeah. You're, so you're so talking we'll two or three percent of the. It's uh, twenty-eight accounts. Twenty-two. Ten percent, or almost ten percent. Yeah, that's yeah. a fair amount. Well, yeah. 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 Are you comfortable with some sort of a reconnection fee? Mm -hmm. I, I pay for our time to go out there and turn it off. Yep. I think the statute is twenty-five bucks. Is it? Twenty-five turn down. But does that fee, <laughs> just like the other ones, does that twenty-five dollars actually cover our cost to well, have some go out and turn off and turn on? And but we probably want to just look at that and make sure that that's yeah. fair. Well, it's set yeah. by statute, so. Right. You know, yeah. we, it's not, it doesn't cover in, but that, that being set by statute. If we already located the curb stop and they're functioning, it shouldn't take longer to it's, it's a Well, I think by... Uh, it's better than nothing. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I would think by having a, a qualification sheet for this, for vacancy, you're, you're probably you're going to see that that percentage of vacancy is going to drop. And that's the right? intent. Yeah. Right. You're right. And I think that's yeah. where we want to be at. Right? Yeah. Okay. I mean, to me, if I'm if it's vacant and the place is empty, it shouldn't need water. Now, if you need to run the heat, then unfortunately, you got to yeah, you're water. You're using water. So you're right, like Carl said, it's not the big savings that it could. Right. It won't be the big savings that it is now. Right. So, right. Um, 
Yeah, it's, it's going to be worth it for many people to pay that extra. I mean, at this point, at that rent vacancy rate that we're talking about, rent the place. Yeah, you know, see. it's going to be it's going to be worth having right. some income to pay for the the extra cost of having the water right. and sewer hooked up. Well, and I, the majority of our, our vacancies are multifamilies, so we're going to pick that up through our survey. Yeah. But they're not single family homes. It's a lot of just I've got five units and three already. Mm -hmm. That was the that was the other thing, Carl, is that then it becomes if you do have a multiple family dwelling, you know, and if you're not using one piece of that, how do you shut that off, right? Depends. Depends. I don't know. We'll have yeah. to how that you know. But but, but the but the survey should indicate that. That's yeah, an annual, that's just an annual thing. Yeah, yeah, maybe we need to look at doing it. Oh, well, I think that that's really that. I think it's immaterial. I mean, I think we're talking about vacancy to a dwelling. Where it's a it's a hookup vacancy is what it is. And if you got an apartment that's empty, you're not going to get a vacancy rate from the town. You know, that's just that isn't. How how else are we going to do not, that? Not with the new works now. Not with the new numbers. You're yeah. right. No. But now, yeah. Now, no. It's I like totally you got an empty right. room. I mean, right I can now, see it's, if it's on, if it's it's on your hookup, yeah, then yeah. rent it. I mean, I can see as a, you know, a business owner, if you were remodeling your whole building for a period of long period of time, say uh, six months sure. or a year, you'd want to yeah. have your water, te you know, temporarily. But if you have, you know, five apartments in one building and four of them are rented and one's not, I mean, I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, at right that now, point, that's just the yeah, right now cost of doing seeing, business. But right now, as soon as we change this, that you're right, it's going to reverse. But right now, like I said, the majority of those 22, that's what it is. Yeah. Because it's a $25. Because it's $25. Right. Yes. Right. So you're right, it'll flip itself around. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we, it, it's realistically to say between now and July 1st, then we can put together yeah. Yeah, an amendment yeah. to yeah. our water policy to clarify the vacancy. Yeah, and, and we could get that information out on the, well, when did we send the information out? Uh, first week in June? Is that first for your CCR, bill? for your consumer confidence report. So, no, we usually, he's talking about the, the information. Rate. We usually send a card with the deck, with the, with the bill. rate increases and stuff like that. We send it with the first <laughs> bill. We usually, yeah, we usually send out a with a bill that, yeah. that tells what the new tax rates are going to be, and I think it comes with the first bill. Did it? I thought it. No, I remember seeing a. Water bill I remember seeing out. a it flyer last year ahead of time. Because the water so, bill comes no? out in May. I don't believe so. In that May water bill will be a link Proposed to like, the consumer confidence report, so right. you could put the vacancy. You could put all the information in the consumer confidence report because you don't have to publish that anymore. You can send in every bill just a link to it on your website mm -hmm. so that people can look at that. Okay. And then, of course, I'm sure you know there'll be an article in the paper with something on the website. I remember know. getting something last year in the mail. I don't know it if that came been. with the water bill or. I think it came with the bill. I thought that yeah. was what we did because we were all. We were all no, I remember making a. I'm sorry, making a stink with Keith about it because it was a big jump in the in the rate, and the, and I didn't hadn't gotten anything in advance to know right. that they missed it. That it was. I remember they missed it. That it was, it was supposed to. That work. it was coming, and it just all of a sudden, bang! It was there, and I think it was 18 percent or something like that. So That's exactly what it was. It came at the same time as the bill, so yeah. I think that having it out so prior to so the if bill. So you adopt the budget the first weekend week, first select board meeting in May then it can go in the May bill along with the consumer confidence report that has to be out by June. Okay. So you can insert into the bill the consumer the link to the consumer confidence report as well as we could put in a, a little rate sheet yeah. that mm -hmm. says what the new rates are going to be. To be active be. first quarter of 2000. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Makes sense. So then that bill would be realized by consumers in July. August or something. Yeah. Yeah. Because the yeah. main bill would be this rates, and then that would be, and that would give everybody the heads up. And if you're going to mm -hmm. do have a you know water meeting in May, because mm -hmm. you would you know do that as water commissioners. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, so I think all right. I think it's. I mean, I think it's great that we're having these discussions and you know getting in ahead. In advance, I like that. Getting <laughs> yes, <laughs> getting ahead. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> of, 
you know, especially water and and whatnot. But uh, all right. What is your first meeting? What day is that? Uh, in May. So what does a vacancy in septic look like? <laughs> uh -huh. Vacancy in septic is currently For, fifty dollars. Well, if you're not, you're no, I meant like how does it? You, you haven't got water available, you have no septic. Yeah, so it's what flows in muscles. May. But there's no shutoffs on sewer. Fully shut your water. Get your water shut off. So there's nothing going down sewer. I just, Fourteen. I'm just going down that road. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we put a plug. <laughs> and lean I'm not sure what the date is. Twelfth, maybe. May 14th. Fourteen. Yeah, fourteen. So we, so four, May fourteenth is our deadline to. Yeah. So that'll have to be the water meeting, and then I'll, and then we'll do the billing after these. We'll try to get that amendment by the fourteenth. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I mean, when it comes to the proposed rates, I mean, at our meeting on the, yeah, okay, so. Are we doing a meeting on Memorial Day? Is that we haven't, that's another item. We'll have to. Right? <laughs> it's a different discussion. <laughs> Did we have it on? Yeah, it's under, it's under other business. Yeah, there's, uh, yeah. Yeah, gotcha. um, yeah, two. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We could have our select board meeting at the rec center. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So moving on, we uh, we had the town return to work policy, which we discussed at the last meeting, and this is its final version. With yep, this is the final version. Of it. We we actually had Wade uh, Masur with uh, LCT there. He's our passing. safety coordinator guy. He's yeah, passing guy. Uh, he took a look at it and said everything looks fine. So I yep. think we're thanks, Tree. We're ready. I've got the Happy final night. version here. If, if everybody's uh, yeah. okay with it, and yeah, you're, 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 you're with everybody this time. Oh, thing. thanks. <laughs> we got you on the same page. Not separated out. <laughs> Paul's moving away. <laughs> yeah. I'm starting to think here. No. You're not going anywhere. It's just stay here. <laughs> that looks all pretty straightforward. I'll make a motion that we authorize the return to work policy for the town of Bethel. Second. Okay, all in favor? All right. All right. All right. Much nicer now that it stays lighter longer, isn't that? Mm. It is. Except for right now when the sun goes down, it's chill. Uh, it was harder yeah, walking into the building you knowing it was so nice out. I know. <laughs> I, like, so I don't like it. Yeah. Yeah. Really? I'm going to go. I could, just, I could just get so much more done. <laughs> I like it in the morning on the front end. Yeah. It's really nice on the front end. I've been getting get some really get up, good get going. morning sun in the house. Uh, uh, warm the house right up every morning. Yeah. Yeah, it's been nice. All right, so we'll move on. We had the uh, information in regards to the depot settlement that we had discussed, right. uh, I don't know, a couple of meetings ago. Yeah, yeah, a few meetings ago. Uh, Greg, can you have some speed on that? So we need to authorize Greg to sign that. Yes. So uh, this is just the... Uh, both. Yep. Both documents. And if you look on agreement. the second document on the first page, it talks about the pay what the agreement is, the settlement agreement, um, the 34.25. Was that the, I was confused, was that 34, was that the number that we had, that was what they had come to we us with? That was, that was it, what the lawyer, yeah, we had a yeah, lawyer. Yeah, that's, what the, that's what the attorney recommended that we settle at. Oh, that was, for yeah. some reason I had a number, uh, $25,000 less than that. Let me see, let me just verify that. It was 25 something or other. Yeah. Does that sound right, Paul? Because yeah. I was thinking it was 2,000 something yeah. that we had talked yeah, about. Yeah, I was too when I saw this. Or, or that's what we had sent back to the attorney. And I think a lot of that was his recommendations yeah. too. Sure. Does that sound right, Carl? Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't think that we changed the recommendation of the lawyer. And, mm -hmm. I, and I am actually 
Yeah, I'm trying to remember how that. Um, I thought that I didn't actually catch on to that. Because when I saw that right. 3400, I, I said, "Jeez, I thought that that sounds high." But yeah. and that was something we discussed in February or something. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah a couple meetings ago. Before town meeting, though, I was thinking. <clears throat> Should this be actually an executive session? Then? Well, I thought it would be too. Yeah. Well, wait, if it was just the final signing the final contract, giving the authority, we couldn't then. We're something. not making decisions about, okay. um, but this question now. Like, yeah, now we may have to go into executive session. Yeah. Um, like, I'm so, pretty sure it was. Do we want to? Okay, so as it says, do we want to go into executive session later? Wait. We probably should to discuss this. I've got an email here to clarify some of this. But, yeah. yeah. So then we should. Yeah, we can always come back out and approve it later or whatever. Do you want or to? Or we can go around later. We can move this down the agenda. Do you want to move it to the end and then? This is probably the easiest thing. We can just go into executive session. Yeah. And just table it for now. Okay. I do have some information here for you. But... All right. So we'll table the depot settlement. Discussion. Um, we will move to an executive session at the end of our meeting. Are we going to be making uh, a decision tonight? Do you think when we come out we, from that, or can it wait? I think you will be. Okay. We're probably going to make a decision on whether or not we're going to authorize Greg to sign that, okay. those documents. So when we come out of executive session, we will make a so I gotta wait. That's what you're saying. Yeah, but it won't take long. But I don't think it'll take long either. But, but rather than clear everybody out now, we'll just do it at the end, and I think that might flow better. All right. Okay. Okay. So we'll just we'll plug that in at the end here. So we'll table that for uh, a few minutes. So so let's um, talk about Greg. Why don't you talk about the, uh, the yes. grant application for? Um, so we this is an application for the passive. Um, there who are in our insurance. Um, so it's for safety related type things, things that that um, could save on claims in the future. Um, we qualify for to fifty fifty grant. We qualify for five thousand dollars. So there's ten thousand dollars worth of stuff here. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, if you look on here, one of the items is an eight by eight trench box. That we want to purchase because we're going to be putting in two fire hydrants every year. Uh, we do not have a trench box right now, and we've got water breaks and things like that. So it's something that we really need to keep the guys safe. Mm -hmm. um, and that's basically just a box you're putting in. It's a steel the, box. That yeah. Keeps the Low walls of earth. Walls from okay, you got it. Yep. And from looking at it, it's like I think I'm understanding this. But yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. It's cool. it's really actually required. Uh, yep. If we could probably get fined if we didn't have it to some of the circumstances based on the depth of the dig and things right. like that. Yeah. Unless you bench it back by so many feet or yeah, yeah. 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 pretty much exposure. Yeah. And it saves us sure. space. And the guys can get fired. Yeah. Not to mention the alternative. Yeah. 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 A bunch of safety cones, like there's 25 cones in there. There's some uh, safety vests, there's some uh, logging helmets, um, and they got a couple of rain suits that are that are type three reflectivity uh, rain suits mm -hmm. that are inside of that. So um, the PPE was for the fire department. No, the PPE. Now the fire department's going to have to wait till the next oh. series because they came in. It was way too high. It was over our threshold. So the PPE and the traffic control is for the highway Both department. Highway. Yep. Highway. And yeah, and the trench box is for the town. Basically, mm -hmm. um, so I'm just asking that you that you give uh, you're, if you're okay with this and give me the authority to sign off on this, and we'll apply for it. The money um, we've put four thousand dollars in the budget next year in the water in the water budget to cover the half for the trench box, mm -hmm. and the uh, the other for the uh, the highway department will already be in the budget. Next year's budget is just supplies and things like that. Yep. We also have to authorize Chris to sign in mm -hmm. our yeah, on our Chris behalf. Is that what it is? Yeah. The applicant's signature yeah. must be you. Yeah, and then right. it's the senior municipal officer. That's who I need. Yeah. I need okay. Chris to... Well, there's two. 
One yep. is the applicant signature, which is you, and the town right. manager. And then, and then this thing and then have to authorize this right. as well. Yeah. Yep, that's why his name is in here. So. Yeah. so I make a motion that we do both to authorize Greg to sign this application and authorize Chris to sign on the behalf of the select board. Second. Uh, in favor? Aye. 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 have it. I just need your signature. Yeah, probably the next cycle. We're allowed to do this once through the calendar year. So the next cycle will be a point of getting the fire department as a something, some sort of bag, rapid entry bag or something like that that they want. So. Mm -hmm. And moving on, we have uh, East Central Vermont Telecommunication Board appointments. I take it these are annual appointments that we, yeah. we do, Carol? Mm -hmm. yeah. And we know that uh, Matt Washburn and Ian Stewart, they're, they're both... Uh, yeah, they've been on it. Been both want to continue to serve. I suspect they do, because this is a document that came from the organization. So I'm assuming that we'd also authorize Chris to sign on behalf of the select board. Okay. So, yeah, you make a motion to authorize Chris to sign on. We appoint them. All, all in favor? All right. All right. All right. <laughs> Next on the list, we had our Main Street parking discussion, which is was tabled from two meetings ago. We talked about, um, at this point, just kind of getting the, the discussion going on what is our current inventory of parking in the downtown versus um, probably going to be the wants of the business owners in the downtown, just to start that discussion on. Um, how close are we to meeting the needs, um, and, and what our, and then we'll move from there going forward on, you know, what our strategy going forward will be to meet those needs if we don't have that currently. So, um, everybody got a a parking survey. Yep, and I'm sorry, I apparently forgot to put in my own numbers. Yeah, the <laughs> too late now. <laughs> it was it was one of those like, oh, do I have time to do that? I'll just think about it later. <laughs> no parking for you. <laughs> yep. yeah. All right, you missed well, out. I guess that's that easy. It. Um, but I can send around an updated one with those. Um, but yeah, so, so basically, is, this was as as far as I could get with who was available and actually accessible. Um, and some of them, you know, I included <laughs> every every business even if they had their own parking. Uh, just to sort of see if they're maxing out their mm -hmm. parking um, and, you know, and if they anticipated needing additional in the future more than what they have. Um, so obviously there's still, there's still a good amount left to do on this, mm -hmm. um, which I'll keep kind of adding numbers to. So a majority, from looking at this quickly, a majority of the parking is, is you know, uh, hour, two hour, during the daytime parking. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks like there's only nine overnight parking, um, give or take, you know, one or two or whatever yeah. it might be. Yeah, and Kevin um, anticipated that he might have, if he, if he made any of the Blossom Block residential, which he's not planning to right now, mm -hmm. but that that would even only be one or two more, <coughs> you know, tenant spots. Um, so that right. wouldn't change significantly. So, so when we when we're talking, I just want to go through this maybe just quickly. So when we're talking the current parking usage, 
uh, low versus high. That's that's based on what we have. It's based on who we answered. We don't even based have. This is probably yeah, because you know it's based on what they think they need currently today. Right. Yeah. Not and, in the future. That's what they. And need I asked today. them to just do a snapshot, any given snapshot mm -hmm. in the day of what would be your low. Yeah. And what would be your high? And and it wasn't actually until I talked to Jim at Cockadoodle that he gave me his peak hours, and I realized that. <clears throat> probably be good to know if they're, you know, like Champlain Farms probably has a, a spot of traffic in the morning mm -hmm. and then it lulls, you know, mm -hmm. and so to kind of know what that ebb and flow would look like yeah. might be helpful, but I didn't, I didn't ask that at the time. So if I can go, you know, as I go forward, I'll ask those things. And then you've got Mascoma, they've got what, eight or so many spots that they've... They've got five for customers and five for employees. Okay, mm -hmm. so 10. Right. And this incorporates employees, so that was a big part of it. I, and I almost broke that out because it was enough of a discussion with each business owner of what's your employee usage versus, you know, if you're retail, the, the come and go. And so the, the employee numbers are incorporated into this. Um, so, you know, so like for Cockadoodle, they typically have four to six employees. And so he was saying even at his lowest times, they'll probably still have one or two customers, mm -hmm. but they're going to have the four to six employees, no matter what mm -hmm. their customer base looks like. Yeah. From reading this, it looks like we're going to average about 100 spots, right? In average. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's yeah. going to be a significant The, the credit jump. union, uh, they've got three employees that use the town lot here. Right. Mm -hmm. And then they've got, that. but they also have the rental of the tenants that live in the two apartments that can't park there during the day, so they're parking in the lot here or, or on the street mm -hmm. uh, because they can't use the credit union lot. Uh, and I think like during the day. what Linda was saying is it's kind of be nice to put a flow chart together of, you know, because if Cockadoodle's, you know, peak is 30, but their peak might be from the hours of five to eight, you know. Yeah, one. Uh, the other, the other businesses where the other businesses between five and eight now are, you know, reducing their volumes. Um, you know, it'd be interesting to see how that flows yeah. together um, because yeah. that parking might be an average of, you know, if you take it over the course of the day, it might be an average of 30 spots you need, yeah. you know. Um, noontime, well, you come through there at noontime, you really get a good cross section of how bad it could be with ev everybody open at the same time right. and cock a doodle in full. Right. Launch mode. Yeah. Is that, I mean, if we got some sort of flow chart of, you know, kind of just like we do with traffic, you know, uh, uh, traffic counts, or, you know, if we could get like some peak time information, is that something that maybe like the BRI would be interested in putting together a mini study of, I mean, I've, you know, I have what, no like idea. eight to nine o'clock in the morning? <coughs> noon to one and, I don't know, five to six or something, what that kind of looks like and, or, or. Yeah, I mean, my, my gut feeling on it is the answer from them is probably gonna be no. <laughs> mainly mainly because their, their mode is really about doing things and less about studying what's happening. You know, it's getting out and being visible and in, in interacting with the community in that way. Um, but that's just my, you know, that's my gut feeling and I have no idea. Could, could be presented to them. What's the status with the en the energy committee intern? Is that, that person going to be studying something about? I don't know if that person's even coming at this point. I know they were looking for some additional funding, I think, because they got like a thousand dollars and they weren't going to get a whole lot of that. So I think that was kind of put on the back burner until they could secure some more funding for it. But you know, it wouldn't be that hard for some somebody to take some samples of during those periods of time just to be able to go down here and wow, there's only three parking spaces available right now at nine o'clock in the morning in downtown Bethel or, or right. something like that. Right, or at two o'clock in the afternoon, there's 20 available, you know, just to kind of mm -hmm. see where, the, where our issues are and what that overlap is. And then we can really see what, at that point, how we will alleviate those areas with, you know, do we, buy a place to put a parking lot to make 
Like the parts store probably has a pretty steady flow of traffic all day long with their four, where they got five parking spaces five out in front. Mm -hmm. And like you say, though, Cumbies is, or I mean, Champlain Farms has probably got a, an ebb and flow with people going to work or getting off. That, like, um, I don't know, 6.30 to 8.30, it's usually pretty packed in there. Oh, yeah. Those two hours, and then after that, it kind of, yeah. you know, the flow right. is a little easier, but that early morning. But the, it's interesting, though, I mean, we think of it, and, and of course, it, it really is beneficial to all of those uh, businesses to have parking spaces um, close by, but um, in fact, matter of fact, though, this parking lot right here is an easy access, it's certainly for restaurant for the restaurants to be able to park here and walk to, to the sandwich shop or the pizza place. Um, obviously, if you're going to run in and get an oil filter, you're not going to park here and walk down to the parts store, but same thing with the hardware. But if you got some kind of an overlap, um, you know, it wouldn't be that hard to add to your Excel. You could you could actually have um, your time frame columns that you could highlight in color mm -hmm. for each business that showed peak times, and then looking down the page, they, you'd be able to have visual overlap. Right. Yeah. Um, of course, we also have to future project. You know, when these buildings are at a hundred percent. What yeah. that, what right. that, you know, what the I was just thinking percentage that, might be. Because it, w it will okay. shut, it'll, if you have a sense of your overlaps, then these numbers will ebb and flow. I mean, you might have 10 from one business and five from another, and if they don't actually coincide with time, then you don't actually have an issue in terms of, it's not 15. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I mean, if you look at it, snapshot in time right now, you know, probably the, the worst part of the day is, is definitely that, you know, I want to say four to seven or something like that. It, you know, everything kind of bottlenecks downtown. There's cars on both sides of the street. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and that's only, you know, I mean, figuring that the buildings are, I, need, I don't know, what, 50% operational, you know, maybe right. at the most. So yeah. when those other buildings get at 100%, you know, and you get dance classes and you have other you know, salons and stuff going on. Yeah, what, that what is daytime. that going to look like? Yeah, right. um, <clears throat> So I, yeah, I don't, well, no, I, first I like your idea of doing the, almost like the snapshot by time of day. And I think for, at least to start, just to sort of inform us, um, you know, it's easy enough for me just periodically to just kind of take a poll of what I'm seeing, record the time of day and the number of spots that are available and, just, you know, just start compiling it. It'll take a little bit of time because I'm not going to do it, you know, no. every hour on the hour yeah, kind no, of thing. No. But, <laughs> um, yeah, I'm happy to just keep a keep a little log going and kind of compile that over the next month or so. Because I know... Find the parking space that nobody ever wants to park. In. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'll always park there. Because, <laughs> you know, the idea is for us to get out in front of, you right. know, the revitalization of the downtown. So, right. um, you know, once these, you know, really do... And I know it's a little difficult to figure out what we have now and then what percent it's going to increase by when, at which times when yeah, right. the buildings are 100%, but we want to get out in front of that because if we know that, you know, bottleneck times we're going to need this many spots. Right. And we really need to figure out not only how can we make more spots, but what makes sense for, you know, uh, where do employees should park? Where do overnighters park? And mm -hmm. you know, and then we got to figure out the whole thing when it snows, and you know, all that stuff too. And so. You got safety issues to look at too, because if yeah. you try pulling up out, if you go to Cockadoo and try pulling up out of that depot parking lot, mm -hmm. you got vehicles on both sides. Can't see. You got to pull halfway out before you even have a. We've shot also it. talked about. Oh hey, <laughs> I had somebody stop. I mean, I was in my truck with a plow on it. And they were thought they were being generous to stop to let me come up through, and there was no room for me to have to make sit here. Make the it was one of those, you go, no, you go, no, you go. <laughs> it's like, oh, I can't go, man. I'm going to rake somebody's vehicle. Mm, yeah. That's pretty funny. Because, you know, the whole idea is just for us to get out in front of this animal, you know, because obviously right. we want to see all the buildings busy. And, right. of course, we don't want to be here, I don't know, a year or two years from now and say, wow, you know, the buildings are so busy and there's cars parked up down you know right. north main street and you know 
you know, we want to be able to hopefully at that point have a good idea of where we can pick these spots up or um, what we're going to do. Right. How and many spots are you going to lose by these bump outs? None. No, none. No. No, those are the safety, the, you know, right now we have the angle landing right. at the ends of the parking lot. Yeah, there's cross hatching already <coughs> there. They're just taking the same space as the cross hatching. Yeah. 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 And not to convolute the issue, but we also talked about, you know, maybe reducing the speed of the downtown, you know, to help out with yeah. some of that too, we've talked about. Um, I mean, I don't know if it, I mean, it, it could be pretty cumbersome for one person to do as an undertaking. I just didn't know if there was, mm -hmm. you know, a group of building owners that would like to get together and do it as their own little thing or, um, you know, I don't know. I mean, do we hire somebody to come in and do traffic or, parking count or you know, something well it depends on where we're going we with it, if, it we, if we start going for grant money and stuff we may need to ask <laughs> those specific I numbers yeah. well i mean i don't know and that well Teresa isn't here but you know i i'm assuming that you can get you know when it comes to the design phase of parking i'm sure there's grant money involved we're gonna i um, think there's no <laughs> point in, there's no point in doing the work twice i mean that mm -hmm. that's the reality is that um this base baseline that you're providing now is kind of a casual eye opening and, it, and it's a good place to jump off. But I think if you get it a little bit more filled out so we can say, well, we're clearly over running or I mean, intuitively, right. we all can see that there's challenges, yes. but right. it's I don't think it's long before we have to start looking at what the grant opportunities are and getting a real planner involved. And I mean, I know that Greg's going to be able to bring a lot to that as well, but it, we're, we're clearly going to need some funding. So okay. having having some valid um, measurement technique will be important for mm -hmm. that, I think. Well, and, and just this is more anecdotal than anything, but um, every single business owner that I talked to was really happy that we're addressing, that we're thinking about it, that it, you know the town is thinking about it, that we're actively talking about it, and I think it became clear to me that this was almost even more of a good faith measure that I was doing, that what I'm doing is, it, you know, yeah, it's not a study, it's not, you know, it's not gonna be super accurate, yeah. but it was kind of getting out there and saying like, hey, we're, we're thinking about this, we want your input, and I think having that sort of back and forth was beneficial and will continue to be, you know, mm -hmm. in whatever form it comes in, but every, everyone I talked to is like, wow, it's great, this is great, this is what we need, you know. Good for you guys for doing this now. So, yeah. So we just need one of those technology to hover the vehicle. So <laughs> Can you program a drone to yeah. <laughs> just go back and forth? So, as a board, where would we like to? I mean, I want to keep the process moving and not not stall at all. So, you know, we have a little bit of parking information currently. Um, and I'll continue filling this out. Just where would we like to see things go? You know, do we want to dig a little deeper into uh, <coughs> the parking study? Do we want to have, you know, Maybe Greg and Therese down. start looking for grant opportunities? Um, well, I think that was one of the reasons why the Energy Committee was looking at, at least in part, some of this discussion because they're talking about ways to develop um, pedestrian access to the, to the downtown or non mm -hmm. non personal vehicle access to the downtown. Well, this time, maybe probably like tap funds or something like that. It's transportation and alternative funds. Yeah, and stuff like that is what they would probably be looking to do. Well, I was just wondering, is, is this an opportunity for an undertaking of the energy committee to? Well, that was I, to well, do was this parking was study. Part of the I think it was that they were applying yeah. for. Yeah. You know, could they undertake the that matching um, with some guidelines? And... It's just that Greg, Greg was saying it doesn't sound like that. I mean, weren't we, they were, they were accessing grant funds for this, through the, it was the Upper Valley mm -hmm. um, project, and it, so. For the intern, yeah. But just for the intern? I mean, I no, thought no, that no. there was we, a study that prepared yeah, we, us for the, for we, the larger we grant. We gave money towards uh, the, uh, what, $7,000 we came yeah. into, I think, mm -hmm. toward this application for the grant that uh, they were putting out. And then they had maps of 
the areas that they were looking to concentrate on through, up through town? Well, what am I from one end of town yeah, to the yeah, other? Yeah, touch thing. base with the energy committee. Yeah, because I think it would fit, you know, hand in glove. Because yeah. uh, while it clearly would be focusing on energy infrastructure, community infrastructure, um, if we're addressing the energy issues. At the same time, we're talking about efficiency and, and um, ac personal access to the business district, and there might be you know, overlapping municipal grants that would be well. The energy committee more attractive because we're taking effort, putting effort into the energy. And the energy committee was also looking at doing a charging station, charging stations yeah. as yeah. well. Yeah. Came, I don't know if it came with the grant, but that was something they were looking at doing with some of the grant money. I know that they got a little bit derailed um, pri prior to town meeting, so there was we haven't heard much from them since then. But. So would we do you should we have um, the representatives of the energy committee come in to the next select board meeting? We or at least grab it, or do you want to do that one on one? Or, yeah. See how see this might fit at. into what that right. Right. Yeah. right. We can at least start there. And just kind of see what kind of feedback. Have you had any luck with the layout of uh, parking lot here? Yeah. yeah. No. No, no, it's not good. It, we're not going to be able to. I, I did some design uh, on the parking lot and some measurements to see if we could pick up some stalls, and there's no way that we can do that unless we move them all to the center. Uh, because the curb length for a, a perpendicular pull in is much shorter than any sort of an angle in at all. Uh, so there's no way to really pick up stalls. If we could, if we shoved them to the middle and angled everything out. We might be able to, but I don't think it's going to be worth our time. To, I think it's pretty well maxed out, maxed out the way it is right now. <coughs> um, down on the roadway, I did do some measurements down here in front of the wall. Mm -hmm. um, I measured a little bit, and, and again, even if you go with a, a pretty narrow angle, which is about 30 degrees, um, 60 is better, but 30 degrees, it's the length is still too short. Yeah. Uh, what I did is I went from the center line to. Uh, so well, I, I gave ourselves a five foot sidewalk basically. So I went back at the sidewalk, out five foot, so we had a sidewalk. And then from there to the center line is what I measured. And we were still about five foot too short, yeah. even at a narrow, <laughs> even at a real narrow. So we would have to take the sidewalk out, move the, the landscaping, put the sidewalk there, and then put the parking in right there. It's just not gonna work. But what if it did, what would, what would the number of parking spaces be? Um, we're gaining two or three, probably. It's 260 feet, 200 and 250 feet, and curb length for a, for a 30 degree parking, we're looking at 18 feet per stall, so whatever that math is. Um, 12. 260, eight, 18 and 260? 12. 12, 12, 13, somewhere yeah. there. That's what we would pick up. Yeah, and we've got like five now, four or five. Uh, those stalls that are parallel like that are mm -hmm. 20 foot lengths. We haven't striped them that way because we don't want to lose any space, right. but right. typically it's a 20 foot length. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Well, that's a nice, that's a nice bump. It would have been a nice bump. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if we'd have done, well, the advantage actually could have picked up more even at 45 degree parking. It's 12 and a half foot curb length. Uh -huh. So you can pick up more spots. It would have been, would have been a lot. But that length, they've got to be 19 foot. It's got to be 19 foot to the to the back of the line, and then you've got uh, your lane length of 12 feet. So 19 feet, we only had we had five, and we had 12 and 10. So we were would have been close. Would so, have been close. So Greg, so you're talking the length in front of the wall, right? right. Yeah. The length in front of the wall would be a total of 13 parking spots. Is well, we roughly, like, these are rough numbers. So, yeah. so currently, if we look at, I'm just thinking out loud, but currently take the parking spots that are in front of the wall mm -hmm. and the parking spots that are in front of the building across the street. How many parking spots are we talking between well, those Well, let's sides? just assume the length. So the length is of the parking lot up here is 260 feet. And there's some unusable space there. So, let's, <laughs> so there's 12 foot drive um, on the other side by, by Mascoma. And there's some areas on the ends of the walls that you can't use because of site visibility. So let's just throw numbers out there and say that we've got 200 feet, 210 feet, something like that. 
the the curb length curb length uh, of the so the curb part. Mm -hmm. um, if we went to forty five degree angle, we're looking at twelve and a half feet per stall, and we've got two let's say two forty. So is that twenty spots? You could get twenty spots on one side of the street. on one side of the street. And but how many do we have on both sides of the street currently? Currently, we've got ten on both sides, counting both sides. No, we've got actually less than that because we've got five on this side. Mm -hmm. That side we've only we've got less because we've got that that bend and that that yeah. blind spot. What if you? Um, I'm just thinking. Out loud. That, the problem is, is on what that if you side? shifted it and had the parking all on one side? One side. So if you had all the parking on the wall side and you shut the parking off in front of the so you opposite make the lane side. shift. So you go from nine to twenty. Yeah. So if you had nine, now you. If we went to all forty-five degree parking on this side. Shut down the parking on that side because we need five feet, right? There's not so we would gain, we would gain like eight feet, right? Yeah. More telephone poles. Yeah, it's eight side. feet. So, so yeah, you could do that, and you shift, and you let you. You'd have to have it restriped, but you, you shift the downtown coming in. You know, you lose some spots on that side, but overall, you you, you come out the what? Only thing that we'd have to look at is that, that radius on the coming down this coming down the bridge mm -hmm. around the corner make sure it's not too tight to get around well, I was thinking like semis too coming right. there's a lane shift there but you're still gonna have you said you needed five feet parking spot on that opposite side is gonna be what eight feet wide it's eight like foot that. yeah right right now so you're gonna get your five feet that you need to make your parking mm -hmm. you could still put a um, a three foot you know buffer yeah, you know it's a no parking area but you have a three foot section that's a buffer between the sidewalk and the yeah, Fog line, I guess, right? So you're looking at something that's kind of like Randolph? The angle? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so the you angle then... So so yeah, no but right, on the right. opposite side, we have no parking. Yeah, and on that side, we could bring the fog line three foot off the sidewalk. Yeah. The curb line. And make it... Because the only thing I'm concerned about is that, that turn coming down. It's mm -hmm. called radius, but mm -hmm. that when you're coming off the bridge, you don't want it to be too steep because mm -hmm. you can't make it into the then you've got this line of cars that fly out. Right, yeah. right. So you oh, want to... Oh, so, oh, but oh, if oh, we oh, could oh, come oh, three foot off the curb, we might be able to make that radius work. And then shift it, but the lane's going to go like that. Is that something that Two Rivers can help us with? Or? Well, I think that there's some resources there. I don't yeah. know what... I don't know there's what funding out there. Because we would pick up, you know... That, we pick up 50% more parking, right? Yeah, but you still have two tractor trailers coming down through there at the same time. Are gonna, you're not making the road any wider. No, let's say it's still still 24 feet wide. So you've still got that. And then you've got vehicles that are backing in the traffic. Backing in and pulling out with that. somebody coming down around that corner. Yeah, so well, it's an interesting concept. It's a, concept. Yeah, it's a design, so you don't, if you're backing out, you don't back into it. You don't cross the yellow line back. With a 45 degree angle, it's 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 shallow enough, if you will, that you almost make a a, a straight back out. You yeah. don't have to come out. Well, that's the thing with Randolph. If you got a big truck, you yeah, park next well, to me, right. and, I'm, and I'm trying to back out, I've oh, got yeah, to go out into the lane. And, and right, and these are minimums here. You're right. So if you've got a dually with a, a hitch on the back or something, Sorry. it's yeah. sticking out in the driveway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. not even dually, but but just a you know a longer a longer vehicle. Right. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, there is definitely that that problem. Yeah. But it would be it'd be neat because you know something like that um, isn't going to take a lot of money to you know it's no different than us you know having some streetscape stuff in the downtown that's temporary, right? We could we could do a get some information from Two Rivers to see if that's going to work. You could pay, which I can't think would be a lot of money to to redesign, you know, striping. Oh, no, striping. he's talking about taking half the spark, the sidewalk, though. Right. Mm. Oh, you'd have to take the sidewalk. Yeah, you'd have to take oh, half, half of it. it. Oh, yeah. It's a 10-footer, yeah. and we take okay. five feet off of it. Yeah. 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 And so there's... Yeah, because we... So you would have some money involved in that, then. But and then, that yeah. sidewalk is... There's <laughs> a lot of aesthetic appeal to that wide sidewalk yeah. that, mm. right there. Whether it gets used or not, it's still... I know it's right. been a... Um, and we've already got grant money paid for the beautification of that sidewalk. <laughs> that was part of our... Well, it's a good option anyways. I mean, we can it, look at... Yeah. I mean, you definitely, if we went angle in, you'd pick up a ton of stalls. That's, we know that. It's just, mm -hmm. it doesn't actually work. As That's it. the amount of room that we have in the downtown. Right. I mean, it's already, you're already at basically minimum out there with the lane, lane widths. I mean, you could go to 10, but they're at, I think they're at 12. I think they're at 12, I don't remember what I'm at. 
differences. Yeah. No, they're 10. They're 10. Did that say 20? Center line to... No, they're 12. Yeah, they're 12. The lane width itself is 12. Mm -hmm. And there's eight foot of parking area. Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah, 20 foot to the curb lane. It's supposed to be. Hmm? It said it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be. I imagine it is. <laughs> I got a full one. I went by mirrors in the white park. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've seen people get them taken off. My father sure. gets taken off in front of the <clears throat> Yeah. Oh, oh, I've seen cool. that a few times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Usually, usually whoever parks right on the bank side gets them. Yeah, but people come down and take three or four of them right off. So for the next meeting, um, so the next meeting, Greg, you'll be able to come back to us with, um, you know, where might the energy committee stand on helping us? Yeah. Um, yeah. Either doing the undertaking on, on this, parking, spot, study. Yeah. Um, as well as um, maybe just Therese looking into doing some grant search on. What some potential grants are out there, and and two rivers. See what kind of downtown planning opportunities yeah. they, because right. they, they, can, they can lend designers, there might be. engineers. To well, work. there are there. You know, there's transportation alternative grants. There's um, community development block grants. There's there's stuff out there. Because we, we might be able to get a grant funded to have an uh, engineer come in and do a study, right? I mean, yeah. Yeah, just like water. You know, yeah. taking the sidewalk out isn't going to be a big deal. It's the curb line. Because the sidewalk's already, it's already got a um, control joint at five feet, so it has to be easy to do. But. Yeah, well, I think those. Yeah, that's good. I mean, well, it's all, it's all good. I'm sure, there's a solution in there somewhere. I tried to make something work on the parking lot just to pick up stalls, and I couldn't find any design that yeah. that would do any better than just straight in because it's it's eight foot wide. You know, it's a piece yeah. Of there was an earlier design, and I don't know a whole lot about this, but with this parking lot of having a second level to it, yeah. is that literally a, at a different height? So yeah, just cutting just into the yeah. hillside here, cutting into the bank. Yeah. And is that just is there a reason that's not being brought up, or it's got to be pretty expensive? To, right? And our to, property to line, our property line doesn't go that far back, but it would be a heck of a cut bank. Right. right. I mean, just the wall alone to put in there would be, yeah. right. you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars, I would think, to yeah, put in the wall. I don't know whether that angle of this parking lot could be ameliorated. Right. You could level out and, and end up with yeah. two step -like, like parking lots uh -huh. in there. It would be a lot of fill and cutting and filling. Mm -hmm. um, you did. The retaining wall probably because you'd have to retain yeah. that would the be slope the, the major expense. Yeah. Wall front. I think there's a ledge in there. Yeah. Well, yeah. Weren't we sitting yeah. there looking at that? Yeah. 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 There's ledge that I don't think you'd go. So it's not necessarily the smartest choice. So. It's probably the worst case scenario. <laughs> yeah. um, we have other ideas. We'll talk, I'll talk about later. Yeah. <laughs> another idea. Maybe <laughs> only if we that. have. Yeah. To. For the money you wouldn't gain, it would be very costly for a few parking spots. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. True. So, uh, <laughs> parking discussion is good for tonight. It's good. Mm -hmm. it's good. Yeah, let's do a little bit. So, Greg will come back to us at uh, the next yeah, one. Yeah, see what we can do. the Energy Committee and what we can possibly do with some grant money and what we can use that for. Yep. Perfect. And we are on to Greg's report. Um, All right, um, so I'm working on the, uh, the highway ordinance we talked about in the last meeting. Uh, I'm looking at rewriting the ordinance so that we can incorporate some of this information we talked about today. And then uh, the biggest part of that's gonna be the parking for this parking lot here. Um, I'm looking into doing an actual parking permit and getting stickers for everybody so they know where to park. And, um, and I'll bring that back to you. The idea is that we would have everybody park during the winter the overnight parking would only be allowed on the top side and we'd buy permanent. So we would know who it is. That way the bottom's clear so we can get into our snow plowing and then the other idea that go along with that is that we would do a like a little blue light or a light of some kind out here that Alan, once he's done the bottom, he flicks that on and then people that live in living there would know, hey I live in the park. Mm -hmm. Slide it back down to the other side and get back in and do the top side. Mm -hmm. That's what we're kinda of working on. So uh, still waiting to reach, still waiting to hear back from all the business owners. Kevin was going to get with everybody, 
and talk about. I ain't been. Yeah. To, you know. Well, he's also, he's been out of town for two weeks. Okay. Yeah. Trying to set up a little meeting so we could all sit down and talk about kind of what you're already doing as far as what do you need for parking and how do you need this to work right. as far as timing. So I think we're kind of moving down that road already. Yeah. So, um, but looking at the actual ordinance and into the permit, uh, I've actually drafted a permit that I'll get to you eventually if this grows any legs to it and for your approval. Um, Working on uh, the conflict of interest policy, so that's the next policy that we'll be working that I'm working on. Kind of keep this ball rolling a little bit. We should have that to you in May mm -hmm. to take a an initial look at. So um, we don't have a conflict of interest we, policy. Or not a full blown it? policy that I can right, find. Okay. We we reference we it. Have in, a, we reference it in the personnel policy. Ties it into the personnel. Not a real detailed full blown deal. So um, you should see that in the month of May for your review. Uh, let's see. The water master plan is moving forward. Um, I reviewed it. It's about probably 30 to 40 percent complete. Um, I'm going to be meeting with this. Well, our engineers and the state has been invited to the meeting on the 27th of April to go over the initial 30 percent complete um, report. Uh, it doesn't sound like the state's going to show up, but the initial report looks very promising. Uh, I don't know if I believe it all yet, but. I'm not sure if the states, you know, they have final review on this, so, um, but if they are okay and they approve what I've seen so far, it's going to be really, really positive. Um, so anyway, that'll happen on, I think that's Friday the 27th, and uh, we'll be meeting to talk through that. Um, what else do we have going on? Town hall painting. Town hall painting, <laughs> yes. So, um... I have a contract with a painter out of Randolph who have done other, they, their, their experiences on historic buildings, on colleges. Um, so I got all their qualifications and got all the information that the state needed. I, I have sent all that to the state. Um, we got historic dollars to do this, which you all know. So the state has to look at it to, and look at my contractor to make sure that they meet all their requirements. That's where it's at right now. You gotta keep the phone ringing to keep air underneath that. Mm. Well, there's another piece to this that's, that I'm worried about. I'm always worried. Um, the state has asked me whether or not we put it out to a formal bid, and we did not. Mm -hmm. uh, I think what happened was Keith got a list of potential contractors from somebody, the state or somebody that right. were qualified, and he sent two or three or four or five, I don't know, sent a few to them. Um, so I, I sent the, uh, the ad that we put, well, the ad that we sent to these companies, he printed up an ad or, or, you know, put an ad together and he sent it to each one of these companies. I sent that to the state and told them what, what, what went down and I'm hoping that they say, okay, you're good with that. If not, it's not the end of the world, but if not, I'll have to go through an actual formal bid process yeah. and then just expedite that whole thing and try to get it moving as quickly. Because they're, the contractor that I've chosen, because I thought I could sole source, um, they're ready to roll in July. They've already, they've already got everything rented, they're ready to go. <laughs> so as long as the state says that the letter is a formal bid process and they're okay with that, and they okay my contractor, we're good to go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If not, I'm gonna be rushing to put it out to bid. I mean, if I remember right with Keith, it, it was, um, he had contacted numerous painting outfits and it was at that time there was only one that was willing to even quote it yeah if i remember right and their quote came in and it was very hot right right um I, I i know he had touched i mean i don't know if you it's not a formal bid process but i know he had solicited bids from numerous painting companies but there was only one that thought that they, that they had the availability or the expertise to do it yeah mm -hmm. um and then they came in and they were Know, two and a half times higher than we thought they were, should have been. But, so I, I don't know. And if we have to go through the bid process, it might just delay us just a little bit. But yeah. yeah. So time. as soon as I hear, I'll make another call um, back to the state again to find out where we're at with it. Um, a, this is state historic preservation, right? Yeah. Yes. Keep calling, keep calling, calling. Yeah. <laughs> so I will do that and- Because uh, they probably have to go through national or federal as well. Well, maybe, yeah. They've got yeah, because yeah. the Department of Interior that we have to deal with, yeah. We had the similar issue with the, with the uh, 
rec center because we have um, park funding for the for the rec center, and so when we wanted to get access just for the for the logging access, yeah. it had to go to the state, and then it had to go to the National Park Service for review. And really? Was, you know, wow. And so, and it's just a matter of keeping air under that document because otherwise it gets. <laughs> right, right. Well, I'll follow up again, and hopefully I come back with good news. Yeah. If not, it's not the end of the world. I just have to go through a bid process, and most likely the same people will win. And because it's very, it's a very specialized project, you have to meet certain um, qualifications, and that's why yeah. nobody bid on to begin with. Um, so I'm hoping that, but I'm hoping that calling people and, and sending them a letter and all that counts as a, a formal bid. Um, that's all I've got. If there's any questions, I'll answer for you. Can you just um, take me through the uh, interlocal agreement update? Mm -hmm. um, so we got the amendment back, and I reached out to the Royalton to ask if they wanted to meet for a joint board meeting to talk over the, you know, the amendment. Uh, they told me that they didn't need a joint board meeting; that they were okay with it the way that. It since then, I believe it has gone to the joint board, and by joint board, I mean the, the facility board, um, and they are currently reviewing it to find out if it's feasible. They're reviewing it from a, uh, an operational standpoint to find out whether or not, if it, whether it's feasible or not to do it. Can they actually physically do it? Uh, I feel that I, I'm not gonna bring anything to you. You know, we'll look at the comments or whatever you have, but I'm not, I'm not, I don't think we're ready to really discuss this until we hear from them whether or not they're comfortable with it and whether or not it's feasible to do. Mm -hmm. um, why Relton just jumped on it and said we're great with it, we're fine with it, I don't know. I know um, we had a lot of questions. Well, yeah. Yeah. Especially on the financial end. I agree. I still think we need to have a joint meeting and I think we probably will eventually, <clears throat> but we're kind of waiting on the, the facility board to get back with this. So what do you think your time frame, Mo, on you guys looking at this? We, Is this we, a couple we of try months? To check with uh, looking into uh, what the insurances were going to cost and, and the cost of more employment, and uh, he should get back to us at our next meeting. When is your next meeting? Which is this, uh, the same week that we have our next meeting. Right. Okay. But he was charged. Because I'm, I'm drawing a blank now. I know we, what were the questions that we had? It was mostly all financially charged, I think. Well, yeah, um, basically, well, the business, should there be a business structure of some kind? Well, that's, Part of that, too. Part of the... Yeah, I guess part of what the joint board's doing, right? Right. right. Yeah. 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 So, I, I don't know if... I think Relton's, you know, cart for the horse a little bit on this. Uh, well, our... And the, the, the other part was whether or not it was genuinely, legally feasible. Right, right. Well, once we get the document completely finished, it's going to be sent to the... Uh, attorney General. General. There you go. Industry. To the Attorney General for a final review. Yeah, yeah, we'll right. definitely do that. All right. Okay. Yeah. So that's where we're at. Kind of waiting and still going to keep pushing for a joint meeting once we get down to the nitty gritty of this. I mean, we have to. We're, yeah. we're partners in this. Mm -hmm. So speaking of Royalton, um, tomorrow night they're having their board meeting. It starts at 7 o'clock, I believe. Um, Green Lantern will be there to discuss the project over there and, and to address the comments that we had. Remember, I sent out the comments from mm -hmm. Mr. Gi from Giuliani. Um, so they're going to be there to address those comments. Um, they contacted me and said, you know, it makes sense to have your board come to that meeting also. And uh, so we don't have to do this exercise twice mm -hmm. and answer the questions twice. Um, again, I talked to Rose and she said, you know, I, I mentioned the joint board meeting thing. And she said, I don't think we're going to do that. So you're all welcome to go to the meeting. There's nothing that says you can't legally be there just on your own accord, as long as we're not making decisions or anything like that. So um, I think it would be wise that you all go if you can. I'm gonna go tomorrow night. I'm gonna go. You'll be there. Uh, but it's gonna be an opportunity for us to hear how they're addressing the comments that we have. And at least what the comments that the attorney had. And then later on, we're gonna have comments. I imagine you all have some sort of comments that you wanna have addressed also. I'd like to compile those up so I can send those out to them also and then they could do maybe do a presentation or a letter or something to us. But tomorrow night I think is really important just to be there to hear how they're addressing all the, the big legal type stuff. So tomorrow night.
tomorrow at 7 o'clock, I believe, is when that starts. Right. Well, i got a baseball game i got to watch, but maybe on the way home. And there'll be others there, too. You know, as long as we don't talk business and you don't make decisions, I, uh, we're fine. We're fine. I won't be. Yeah. But I'll be there, and, and Mo will be there, and uh, if anybody else can make it, we'll, I'll try to write notes out the best I can. I, I assume they're going to read It'll be all recorded anyway. Yep. Okay. So, uh, that's all I got. Any other questions? No. I'm good. Any, Any else? Have app any applicants on the uh, top oh, crew? Yes, I got three applications. Um, I'm working on doing interviews. Uh, I did one today. We got another on Thursday, and I'm waiting to schedule the last one. Cool. So, yeah. Good. Okay, good. And then the new position, job description? Still kind of slowly working on that. Yeah. Still, yeah, there's, there's a lot of kind of moving parts to that one. Every day it seems like if something else comes up and that, I want to add that to the list. Right. Yeah. Well, mowing Moen, is going to become the long. Yeah. Well, I'm going to have to move. I'm going to have to move him into that quicker, at least on a part-time basis. And we've got some areas that, I guess, the plow hit that need to be fixed up, too. That, mm -hmm. yeah. The road crew is just going to have to cover that for a while. For now. We ha also have uh, to set our date for the May board meeting. So we have the 14th, and um, we need to avoid the holiday. So right, um, and the 28th is a holiday. Typically, what we end up doing is moving it up. Mm -hmm. um, so are we thinking about doing the 14th and the 21st mm -hmm. for really for May? Yeah. Does that sound good for the 21st for all? And I will be out on the 14th. I won't be here, but Teresa is going to cover for me. So I'm um, I'm teaching in Waitsfield that week, um, but I I can get here. I just I'll be late. Um, so it'll just I'm not sure exactly. We usually finish take up. Take it around. out of your pay. It's okay. Uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> it'll hurt, but I'll I'll manage. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't work. Time. Okay. Yeah, just, <laughs> we'll give you can I make it up somewhere yeah. else? <laughs> yeah, you, time. Yeah, you can yeah. do a traffic study downtown. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy, can I? Yeah. So we'll do the 14th and the 21st. Okay. Yeah. Normal times. Yeah. Okay. Be traveling back that day. Yeah. Is that going to be all in favor? Aye. 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 So those are their dates for our May board meeting. Uh, look through the select board. Did we miss something? Select board minutes. Don't we usually go through the um, constable stuff? And, yeah, it's there. Uh, yeah. And if you take a look at any of the constable in information, it looked like he was pretty busy on writing tickets. Uh, looked like there was a couple of high volume speeders going uh, you know, in a, in a normal area from the corner down to the school. Um, you got one, what was it, 58 to 35 yeah. or something? So. I'll tell you, this the weather this weekend brought them out. Yeah. I'll tell you, going by my place, it's just mm -hmm. incredible. How's the, um, incredible. are the boards all up? When I drove by this one, I don't know if it was today or yesterday, it wasn't working. Yeah, yeah it, it is working again. Awesome. Yeah. You know, I noticed that it works as you approach it from down by the intersection, but but then you get within eye shot of it and it's not working. It's reading. Yeah, you know, yeah it's finger, almost like the sensor got yeah, It's reading further sometimes. down it's and then just some LEDs if, that if are you, out. If you come up there at 40, it'll still be on. If you're doing the speed limit, it goes off. How do you know that? Because I tried it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good way to test the system. No, uh, if you're going faster than the 25, it, it stays on. You're not supposed to see how fast you can go. That's not what it's for. Uh, 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 I thought that's that's, 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 he was on a skateboard. That was before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I just got thinking, you know, when I was looking, the, you know, we're getting into nice weather. We're going to see the speeds coming up again. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's an opportunity for us to... Play around with the locations of the boards. I know we talked about getting. We're waiting on funding the grant money to get uh, possibly get the solar retrofit because yeah. he's constantly there's. I mean batteries. Seems like they go oh, out every couple of weeks. Things are, especially in the summer. Are flush. Everybody's going out an hour, but. Well, yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's that's why you see him out intermittently is 
typically it's the batteries. Well, the speed on the solar one, certain reasons, the little solar panel. We're talking power. about, yeah, so while we got some uh, some grant funding, right? Yeah, yeah that hopefully get either that. a new one with a solar panel or a retrofit with a solar panel on right. top of it. It takes away the mobility part of it because they're more, you know, those, those panels are big and they take some, some mounting, but it allows it to stay long. And it seems like from, from this bridge around the corner down to the school, right where the state, you know, town and state borders at, that, I mean, that's where the, all those, they're flying, going out and coming in, you know, it's not a... That's a tough stretch. Yeah. It always has been people get bored going 25, I mean, uh -huh. particularly climbing this It's surprising how many people speed up coming around the corner here on the bridge headed down through mm -hmm. the, you know, because tonight wife and I were saying just there's a lot of people are doing the 130 right there. But I've noticed, I mean, just in the last week, I mean, the amount of foot traffic on the sidewalks, you know, traveling back and forth now, it's nice out. And mm. of course the speeders are out too, so. Um, but I've seen Mark out, I mean, every time I've been out, I, I see him out and about too, so. Yeah. Just well, concerning again, no the, I mean, it goes back to we talked about, we talked about a few times about potentially lowering the speed. Yeah, from, I think it's a great idea. From, from, from kind of like the feed area all the way to the school through the, yeah. and bringing that down to 20. I'd like to see it 15. Uh, we will be rewriting the, the roadway ordinance eventually. That's the opportunity. At least 15 up to the bridge. Yeah, yeah just through the downtown yep. corridor. Yeah. yeah, I mean, people are definitely flying. So, but it's amazing how fast they go through here. They got a bunch down on the far end of the flats by the corner by my house. The the trooper's been down there lately. Yeah, he's been sitting the fire house. station, sta the stadium. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they've been getting a lot of them. Yeah. But, yeah. All right, uh, select board minutes. Mr. Proofreader, has it all, are they all set? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm not going to make a motion. Don't make a motion. Yes. I hate this. <laughs> What'd you find? Well, in the, down on the, the discussion at the bottom of the page, mm -hmm. um, my point was that we, we wanted to have a document that also included some kind of financial structure, not what the financial manager would do per se, but just a, a business structure um, as part of the um, the uh, amendment to the to it's the, the second bullet point. And it's the second bullet of point. Says Valley asked it should be a document that spelled out what a financial manager would do. It's not. So it, that would be a. Structure? Yeah, it's more like the. Or business structure. The business structure of the the new entity would be. I mean, the, the joint board would be just would be settling on what the financial manager would do. Okay, so if we, so if we change, change the word to structure. Yes, okay. yes. Right. with the financial structure. And take out okay. prior to hiring. Okay, okay. Perfect. And then the last paragraph <laughs> on the back side, if we read through that, it just doesn't, it doesn't read. Which one? Uh, the last, last paragraph on the back side. Talks about Carl, <clears throat> Carl of the cemetery uh, commissioner. So, you know, bo both both the health officer and the cemetery commissioner have paperwork and additional paperwork. It just seems to be worded awkwardly. Well, both of those positions have. Uh, you know, higher responsibilities for right. Resulting. Higher remuneration for both positions, maybe something like that. Okay. 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 I move to accept the minutes as amended. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah. Do we have last week's? Do we get the last month? Yeah. I don't know. Any other business to come before the board? I have one thing real quick. Before we head into the minutes. Uh, the only ten stage race, the bicycle race that goes, oh, yeah. I guess, mm -hmm. uh, they come through town. They have for the last past few years as well. They come down and 
12, maybe, and hit North Street, North Road, and North Dale. It's a little piece. They're just asking um, that um, statement of consent to use our roads. They're asking if it's okay if they use our roads. It's like a two hour hill. Not shutting the road down at all. We're just going to be coming through for a couple yep. hours. Um, I need board approval to authorize me to sign this consent form if you're okay with We've that. We've done it in years past. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. every year for yeah. Yeah. like forever. Yeah. I want to make a motion that we authorize Greg to sign the permission slip for the stage race. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. No problem. We right. move we go into executive session for legal matters. Second. That's, this one's from that we just got. So we're holding on to that one. This is the one that was amended last, last time. Week. Yep. All right, so we plan on going into executive session quickly to talk about, and then we'll be back out to make a decision, so. All right. All right, then, so I guess that um, the board, I would make a motion that the board authorize Greg to sign these agreements, the, uh, Mutual general release agreement and the settlement agreement with the depot partner, uh, depot, the Bethel Depot Incorporated. Okay, a second. A second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any other business to come before the board tonight? I move we adjourn. Second. Second. All right.